Yeah, there we are. Okay, we're back here. 32 degrees of insanity. Donnie Gilson, 9.05 in the p.m. Right here on freedomizerradio.com. I think we are actually... Let's see here. Sucks when you don't have your own producer. There we go. Perfect. I am all set. Everything is fine. We are back on the air. Last week, or last Monday... We were having some problems with the board, and the same thing was happening today. You know, I'm just wondering if there might be a little virus on my side, so I need to check that out uh, come the uh, next couple days or so. But uh, we are back on the air tonight. Uh, I am going to be reading from I, – I got in my, in my, uh, in my mail uh, – I've been talking about the Eagle Foundation as of late, and uh, the, uh, the founder of the Eagle Foundation – Z.M. Rabolo uh, actually was, uh, had written a book called Herculobus or Red Planet. And actually, I received my free book. And if you go to her- Herculobus.tv, uh, Herculobus is spelled H-E-R-C-O-L-U-B-S, uh, you can uh, go to that .tv and receive your own book. But tonight, what we're going to do is we're going to actually read from this. And this might actually be... Uh, I don't know how far we're going to get through it. It's it's a fairly lengthy book. I would say it's about oh, see, it looks like it's 52 pages in length, uh, about three or four paragraphs per um, per page. But it's quite interesting. I I was taking a look at it yesterday, and I thought it was actually absolutely amazing. And I actually talked to the the president of the Eagle Foundation. We have been playing kind of phone tag here. Uh, he lives in the United Kingdom, and we've been playing a little bit of phone tag, but we are going to be having a conversation with him and I and lining up a time uh, for him to join me on the air is here as well. But I thought tonight would be a great night to do a read-through on this. I thought it would be a, a, a fabulous time to do that. I want to thank everybody for joining us tonight as well. But first things first, um, We've been talking about this strange UFO, uh, planet, moon, whatever you want to talk, whatever you want to call it, uh, down in Antarctica, uh, that happened on August 10th. Of course, uh, live on our Facebook page at www.facebook.com forward slash Ursu Adams. We were we were showing it live, and we, before I created the video, we 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 were posting the uh, actual photos of it on on our uh, Facebook page. A lot of speculation on this on this thing. We've had a lot of speculation, but if you did not listen to the last hour of Monday Night Show, we had one of our new uh, hosts here on Freedomizer Radio, uh, Brooklyn Girl, who is in our chat room right now. Uh, and if you are listening to us on Blog Talk or if you're listening to us on uh, UrsuAdams.com, Definitely stick around over there, but come on over to freedomizerradio.com and join us in the chat room. We've got a lot of our, uh, our, our regulars in the chat room tonight conversing throughout and such, so it's great to see you all there tonight. Ren, Mojo, uh, Book and Girl, all of you guys, good to see you uh, here tonight. But Book and Girl brought up something very interesting uh, in the last hour of my show on Monday night. They're coming to get me. <laughs> uh, the what she had mentioned was that, and I, I'm going to try and do this verbatim. What I wanted to do is I wanted to replay the that part there with Brooklyn Girl uh, that we that we uh, we were talking about. However, I'm going to try and recite what she said, and if I'm a little off, I, I think I, I think I got it down pretty pretty correctly. Uh, basically, what she had discovered was when she took a look. At uh, down at uh, uh, AWI, uh, which is the uh, uh, the Alfred Wagner uh, Institute, which is of course New Mars Station, New Mars Station Three. When she went down there and she started looking at uh, radio frequencies and such, and, uh, weather weather balloon activity, uh, she had noticed that there was no weather balloon activity or radio signals on August 10th, especially during this period of time when this so-called click-by-click weather balloon was supposed to be launched, uh, or supposedly launched, uh, there at Newmar Station. Now, what I had talked about is also there was, a, uh, at that period of time, there was, at 11 o'clock, there was no arm extended out, extended out of Newmar, 
And then at 11.20, there was still no arm, but at 11.10, there was an arm, okay? Now there's a, now there's a new video floating around, and I showed it in my particular video uh, of the um, so-called weather balloon last year that I covered in August, on August 6, 2011. Well, during that period of time, we saw two gentlemen up on top of the deck looking up at this balloon. But it didn't look like they were, it looked like they were actually looking up at this thing. And everybody thought it would, might have been a weather balloon at that time. And we covered that back in August 6th. Now, the interesting thing that Brooklyn Girl brought up to us was that they only launched these, launched these weather balloons a few times a year. And, but what's specific is the time that they, that they launched these weather balloons. One's at noon and then another one at midnight when they launched these things. Well, this particular thing was, such a, was shown at 1110, so it would make no sense. And all the articles that are being spewed out there, uh, of course, Fox News has now run with it, MSNBC ran with it, uh, uh, Live Science, Weird Science, whatever, I'm, I'm sure Space.com is. A lot of people are running with this. Was it a UFO? Was it a weather balloon? What is this? What is that? What makes it newsworthy? Because this was also shot last year, August 6th, 2011. Didn't make the news then. Why is it making the news now? And in every single article that I have read, every single article that I have read, it says it was in a few frames. Few. It was only in one. It was in the 1110 footage. 1110 in the morning. Now... What I, you know, and I, I'm not a big, big proponent of Tulloch, as you know. You know, I, I, I think he's, but one of the things that he said, and I remembered something that he said, he said something about this biosphere type of uh, equipment, technology, UFO technology, that has been being used here in, on, on our Earth to track our weather and all of that, and, and it's uh, some sort of alien technology. Now I've looked at weather balloon. Uh, I looked at the weather balloon footage, of course, down at Newmar Station, and of course we see a white weather balloon. Every time they do any type of footage in regards to the weather balloon, it is a white weather balloon, and it is about the size of a man. Okay, and also you can see equipment hanging down from it. Well, in this particular weather balloon, and and I also want us to recall. Last year, the point of view, okay, this is where I think a lot of people are, are, are getting mixed up. The, you know, I've been tracking Newmar Station now for almost, you know, a year and a half, two years now, okay? So I, 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 I consider myself an expert at Newmar Station, you know, because uh, I look at it every single day, you know? And every single day I go down there and take a look at what's going on in Newmar Station. It's, yeah, it's fun, you know? I think it's kind of interesting to take a look. And we find weird stuff all the time down there. But anyways, as you know, the point of view of the camera location, now pointing directly at Newmar Station, has been brought way back, further back, way, way, way back. I, I would say, I would guesstimate maybe a football field worth of how far it's been pulled back. Last year... That camera was pretty much right up on top of it on Newmar Station. If you remember correctly, we could see that uh, thing that looked like a swing set fairly well. We never saw the windmill before until until they brought it back. But we could see that you, you know now when you take a look at this thing, you can see the windmill and you can see the uh, uh, what you call it. Um, the swing set type of thing, and you know, in the in the frame along with Newmar Station. Well, before you could not see that. And if you remember the pictures correctly of what it looked like, you know, uh, you could. We were pretty much butt up right up on Newmar. We could see the uh, the thing that raises up and down where all the equipment comes out of as well. But now they've changed that. So, 
for people to say that the shot that they're looking at is the same size as the shot as what we're looking at now is impossible. Because the point of view is absolutely, completely different. The camera angle is completely different. So the camera angle, if, if that was true, that object would be smaller. Okay? Absolutely smaller. And hang on a second. Let me plug my phone in here real quick. I just heard it go beep, beep, beep. So we don't lose uh, anything here. So I want people to get off that whole side that is the same thing that we saw on August 6, 2011. Now, this, tonight, this video is going to go up on YouTube because, you know, they didn't talk about it last August 6th. And, you know, we ran with it. A lot of people ran with it. But if you look at the two videos and you compare them side by side, they could not be the same exact size. Impossible. Impossible. The footage, the footage that we see now is completely... Utterly, I mean, the, the, the object itself, if it was a balloon, and I remember, I remember one of the, you know, one of the pictures that I saw last year. Remember when I was on that bird thing? When we were seeing all these weird birds show up at Newmar Station? And then there was this one bird that looked like it was the size of Newmar Station, literally. Wow, there's a lot of them. Why is there always, like, police activity going on when I am on the air? Here, I mean, I I see them cruising down. I live off uh, 390 or the uh, the I 80 here, and all day long, I have been hearing police activity and fire trucks everywhere. Uh, it's absolutely it's been absolutely crazy um, what I've been listening to to today. So, anyways, going back to this new bar station, the point of view is completely different. I want you all to make sure that you take a look at both of those. And, and you know, our good friend T-Bar, I love T-Bar. you got to love T-Bar. <laughs> you know, my, my nemesis, he's been good, he's been good to me as, as, of, as of late. You know, he hasn't really been attacking me. He's been kind of doing his own thing. And, 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 and T-Bar does, you know, he does his good, he does his good thing. You know, him and I have, might have had our, our differences. He, he does his thing, I do my thing. And if people don't know who T-Bar is, He's uh, you know kind of my arch nemesis as far as a, he's kind of he's kind of my Francis Walsh of YouTube. <laughs> but he says it's just you know well we look at the diameter of it and uh, the uh, you know the circumference of it is the same exact size as the one that's showing up on August. I'm like sitting there I'm like uh, T Bone you remember you've been following Newmar just as much as I am. That's the point of view is different, right? You know, and I, I was watching this video because it was ladder in his video, and uh, because he's like never showing up everywhere in one of his new videos, and it's true, people are all over the place. You know, saying that Nibiru or Globus or whatever we want to call it is showing up everywhere, and I think we need to be cautious on that. Now, now, the new date. There's a new date with John Moore. John Moore had his radio show yesterday. I looked at a little bit of it, a little bit of it. And then the minute I heard him selling his DVD and pushing his DVD of the Cataclysms, I was like, oh, that's it. And I know they're doing something, him and Lucas are doing something down in uh, uh, Las Vegas sometime the end of the month, which I find funny is if you Google my, or if you put my name in YouTube, they, they put my, my name in their tags so that they can get, you know, promotion. Of their uh, of their little uh, thing that's going on down there in Nibiru, but they they don't want to invite me down there. But yet they'll put my name in their tags so that uh, you know people that are googling me or YouTubing me will make sure that they that, that they're uh, you know. But that's how people work. You know, I walk on my on my bandwagon. That's fine. I don't care. <laughs> it really doesn't matter to me. You know, the more publicity, the better. The planet. You know, people are in the chat room. Planet X just landed in my living room. Well, you know, I think we need to be very cautious. And that's why tonight what I want to do is I want to read this book. And I have not, as I said, I've read a little bit of it. I have not read all of it. 
So tonight's going to be a learning experience for me and for you in regards to this book. I wanted to do this live on the air because this is new information for me. And I think as we read along on this book, and if you go to Herculobus, H-E-R-C-O-L-U-B-U-S dot TV, uh, we will, you can uh, order your own free book. And it comes, comes within a couple weeks. Uh, actually, it was with, to me within a week. And tonight, the content of the book is, of course, the introduction. And then, of course, uh, from page 11 to page 17 is Herculobus or Red Planet. The next thing is the atomic test of the ocean. Then it, dis then it discusses extraterrestrials, life on planet Venus, life on planet Mars, an interplanetary spaceship. Number 39 is all about the depth. Number 45, page 45 is all about the astral unfolding. And 51 is the final notes. So tonight we're going we're gonna to read this. It's going to be a different show tonight. Uh, also, if you guys didn't get a chance, uh, to take a look at uh, what was happening down at Fukushima. Uh, real, something really interesting happened over in Fukushima the other day. Uh, they were, there was a live feed, and all of a sudden you saw this red, this really weird red lightning in the background. And I, I, I have to, you know, I was looking at it and I have to stop it, but I thought for sure I saw some sort of planetary object. It looked weird. It looked like a, it looked like a sun, but it was nighttime. And all of a sudden, it was weird. This like fog comes over Fukushima. You can see this weird fog, and then this lightning and this red lightning comes, and then you kind of see this this thing that looks like a sun, a red sun. Could it be possible that the that what they have talked about, as far as chemtrails are concerned, is one of the you know the you know as I'm as you know I'm not a big proponent of chemtrails. As I, you know, more than the or possibility of extraterrestrials uh, that are that are doing this time travel technology. However, um, with that being stated, I haven't seen chemtrails here in Nevada now, working on almost two and a half months, and I can't because I was kept seeing it all the time because in Minnesota where I was. Where I lived in St. Paul, I never saw chemtrails, rarely. Remember those videos that I shot last year? I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, my fat ass was running really hard <laughs> to try to get the shot of, uh, of, of these so called things which I thought looked like comics. They were very, very high in the atmosphere. Because we never, in Minneapolis and St. Paul, I never saw those things before. Ever. You know, I, I remember my brother talking about chemtrailing and all that stuff down in Los Angeles. And I'm like, dude, don't, that doesn't go on here. We might see vapor trails, but I'll see chemtrails. And then all of a sudden, last summer, I started seeing these chemtrails. So I started doing investigations into it. I'm like, well, what is it? Could it be a comet? Because we knew that these comets were coming. I remember being on uh, on uh, Revolution Radio, and I was, you know, talking to Nighthawk, and you know, and he's like, dude, those are just chemtrail planes. I'm like, no, they're not. And now, ironically enough, these things are weird. They're gone. These high atmosphere, high atmosphere running planes that we took a lot of shots of. There was a, there's a lot, I did, I did a lot of videos on them. Actually, there's one famous video that I did back in January of where that damn thing was moving in a straight line, so straight, and it disappeared. Right in the, right in the middle, right in the front of us, right in the camera. And it was making this kind of like, weird colors behind it. Very, very strange stuff. Very, very strange stuff. I got a, I got a caller here on 615. I'm going to bring that caller on here. Erica, 615, who's this? Uh, this is Chris Williams out of Nashville. Hey, Chris, what's going on, buddy? Um, I've checked those pictures out that you uh, put up, uh, I, and, I, and I, I believe what you're saying is true because from when he let that weather balloon, you see him standing there with that weather balloon, and then the angle that you see the station in that object, that looks like that planet of the picture you got posted on your web page. That, yeah. you, like when you zoomed into it, you can kind of see like the, a little dark lines or something like that, but it's real faint. I'm thinking that's what it was. I'm thinking it's a planet. I don't think that's a weather balloon. They they got to be kidding me. 
Yeah, no. no. It's, you know, see, this is this is the thing. You know, why would if it if it was a weather balloon, okay? One new Mars station would come out and confirm that it was a weather balloon. We haven't heard anything from the Germans. Not a single thing uh, from the Germans. Not a single thing. And and it, they would we you know we we have actually had one of our one of our one of our hosts here on Newmar, uh, one of our hosts here on Freedomizer, you know, kind of do a little bit of investigation. She's found out that these these so-called weather balloons are only launched during certain periods of time, and the the time stamp doesn't match up to when they usually launch these weather balloons. And the weather balloons themselves, if you go down to take a look at the Alfred Wegener Institute, uh, you will notice that these weather balloons are white. They, they, they look very, you know, they have a specific look to them. They are not spherical. They are actually teardrop looking. Uh, and, you know, it's like, it's like the whole Roswell incident. Oh, it was a weather balloon. It's always a weather balloon when it comes to UFOs, isn't it, guys? It's always a weather balloon. And, and, and right. I, I find it, it's like you're, you're trying to insult my intelligence here, you know? Yeah, and you're right about that. And, the, and, and how the, the size of the thing gets the distance and the angle, that, that, that object is gargantuan. If you can well, see, of course that, it is. That, it's that, huge. It's that has absolutely to be a, that's huge. A <laughs> and and so, people I mean, are not people are not recognizing that the that the that the so-called picture that they took last year. You know, the point of the view of of the picture. I mean, this thing is. You know, now the camera. I don't know why they pulled the camera away so far. Now, I mean, the camera for New Mars Station is now at least a football field away. And uh, it, it seems it just seems to me it's weird. Uh, and of course, I recently took some some uh, looked at some satellite footage of actual New Mars Station itself, not webcam footage, but actual Google footage of uh, of Google Sky footage of New Mars Station, Google Earth, and New Mars Station is absolutely missing. It's not there. I, and I, I've seen that because I've tried to. Uh, uh, I was trying to go find the AWI website New Mars Station because I ran uh, you had a link posted on uh, on there or something strange, some crawling up out of the ice or something like that. Oh yeah. Uh, like yeah, yeah. And, and and later on, you know, I, I try to go and the station is gone. You see track marks but you don't see the station. So oh, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering this I'm just well, wondering yeah. about that and then what well, came up out of that ice? It's very weird. It's it's very strange. You t you actually go down to Google Earth. You 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 see a a, a Atari game looking uh, picture of New Mars Station. Everywhere else in the world, you don't see that. You know, you don't see the Atari game. You can go and you can look down and you can get a three dimensional look of a building. But New Mars Station, for some reason, on Google Earth is this this uh, this Atari looking game looking thing. And uh, and everybody should do that. Go down and take a look at New Mars Station. Go to put in the latitude and longitude of New Mars Station. Go directly down there. It will bring you to the coordinates. When you go to the coordinates on Google Earth, you will see the actual posts that New Mars Station was on. And it looks like it's been moved off off the posts. And then when you go back a little bit, you know you'll see New Mars Three, and then it turns into this like Atari game. It's, it's, it's kind of funny, actually. Wow. But it, you know, you, you, we, we never, we're never going to get a straight answer on that. But uh, I want to thank you for calling very much. We're going to go into a break here real quick here on 32 Degrees of Insanity. If you guys want to give a call in to area code 347-324-3704. Again, that's 347-324-3704. Uh, you know, let's, let's pipe in on this. Uh, and we're going to read from this book as well. So stick around. I want to thank you, 615, for calling. If you want to stick around a little bit more, we uh, might bring you back on as well here. Let's see if I can find a little uh, advertisement. Give some Liberty stickers for us. Huh? Tease you with the Liberty stickers. I'm thinking, well, here we go. You We're know back. the Constitution. Ay, ay, ay. La Chupacabra. Oh, yeah. Ay, ay, ay. La Chupacabra. Right here on 32 Degrees of Insanity. Freedomizer Radio. Uh, dot com. Actually, it was just getting a Skype from Chris Gio. Of course, I'll be back on the air uh, this Saturday night for special edition, special edition thirty two degrees, special edition of thirty two degrees. Uh, we'll be on right after Chris and Cherie's show on uh, Truth Frequency Radio dot com. Uh, uh, <laughs> Chris just says, "Oh, what's up?" He's been going to the chiropractor. I don't know if anybody heard, but Chris was involved in a car wreck. 
a couple weeks ago. You know, it's like Cherie got hurt, got hurt first. So she had those, that uh, problem with her, um, with her stomach. And then, of course, uh, Chris then gets a car, a car accident. This guy hits him from behind, and now he's been going to the chiropractor uh, for the last few weeks here. So uh, interesting indeed. Also, guys, um, I will be having on my show on the 25th of August uh, the uh, Sandra Sabatini of the Pythagoras Conference. Uh, she will be joining me on my show. Of course, if you've been over at www.ursuadams.com, you know we've been selling tickets for the Pythagoras Conference, which will be taking place in October, October 10th through the 14th. My brother Gary Voss, uh, my older brother, uh, will be speech speaking there in regards to alternative energy and UFO technology, uh, anti-gravity and such. He'll be one of the guest speakers there uh, at the conference. Uh, you can buy tickets for the Pythagoras Conference on my website, www.ursuadams.com. Just click on the uh, the actual banner. Uh, it'll bring you to the. It's a four day four day conference. Uh, it's four hundred ninety nine dollars for the conference. However, the speakers are absolutely incredible. Princess Nakamura is going to be there. She is the one who uh, had the grand speech about the three days of darkness. Uh, that will be uh, supposedly taking place December 21st, 22nd, and 23rd, which is the end of the Mayan calendar. She'll be there. But if you want to save some bucks, if you want to save some bucks on it, on it, uh, all you have to do is go and input the promotional code DON, and of course, you can buy your tickets there. It'll be 100 bucks off. So it's like 80 bucks a day for the conference. So it's, uh, it's a five-day conference. I'm sorry. So it should be quite interesting. I'm hoping to make it there uh, with my brother, and uh, hopefully we'll be doing a live show uh, from there as well. Uh, just kind of depends on what I'm going to do. I haven't really made my decisions yet. Um, you know, I, I posted on my Facebook over the weekend that, uh, you know, I'm kind of in this flux. Do I go? Should I stay or should I go now? You know? Um uh, I don't know. I'm, 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 you know, I've got a lot of great friends here in Reno, and I've been talking to, talking to them uh, about, you know, what I should do. Uh, of course, you know, I've been seeing somebody, uh, which uh, she's great. This week we kind of took a, uh, a week off to see each other. Her, her daughter is in town, uh, and she's been spending some time with her daughter. Her daughter came down from, I think it's Idaho, uh, and so she's been spending some time with her daughter. Uh, we're all going to go out tomorrow night, of course. And uh, maybe hit up the Olive Garden. The Olive Garden's got like this all-you-can-eat food. <laughs> and you know, I, I don't know. I haven't really decided. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm starting to get my roots here. Uh, and uh, you know, of course, as we know, I all got accepted to the University of Nevada Reno for graduate school. Uh, should I put that off? Um, I don't know. Uh, I really would like to finish that and maybe get my doctorate uh, at some point. But, you know, right now is a very crucial time for humanity. Very, very crucial time for humanity because it is a time that uh, we need to start focusing not only on where we're going, but where we're headed. You know, now, you know, as, we, as, as I've been talking since 2007, you know, about these two different timelines, I, I, you know, well, you know, basically, you're either going to go down the path of destruction or go down the path of love, which path do you choose? Now everybody's jumping on, are we part of a catastrophic timeline or are we part of a, uh, a, uh, a positive timeline? Stuff that Alfred and I have discussed, Alfred Weber. Uh, now, you know, Drake is going down that, which I find absolutely hilarious, because I don't agree with anything this Drake guy says, uh, but I will agree with him on, on that, <laughs> uh, because I think it is a choice that we, that we have to make. And uh, when I read this book here, as I said earlier, uh, and if you're just joining us here on 32 Degrees of Insanity, welcome. Listen to us on the archive. We want to thank you very much for listening to us on archive. But I was talking about the so-called UFO drone possible weather balloon, uh, possible planet down at New Mars Station. And we've pretty much come to a consensus that it is 
a drone? Could it be possibly what Tollick said, that biosphere type of drone? Is it a planet? Is it a moon? Is it a rogue moon? Is it a rogue planet? Is it something, you know, that, you know, everybody says, well, if it's so big, everybody in the world would see it. Uh, no. No, no, no. Not if it's orbiting below our planet. Say it's, say it's actually orbiting through the southern, you know, if it's orbiting around the south, we're not going to see it. We don't see the same sky as the southern hemisphere does. And we definitely don't see the same sky as do Mars Station does. That's for dang sure. So unless you take a flight down to Newmar, which is pretty much impossible, because reaching Newmar Station is pretty much, if you, if, you, if you ain't got a way in, there ain't no way you're going to get there. That's the, that's the mystery behind Newmar Station. And as I said, as the caller that called in earlier from uh, 615 from Nashville, he stated, he goes, you know, I, I, I think you're right, Don. It's either a planetary body. It looks like a planet to me. we got to remember that point of view, guys. Go back and take a look at the point of view. Why did they change it? Why? Question, question, why? So, of course, um, as I was stating, we are going to be having uh, – uh, Laura Eisenhower is going to be joining us uh, sometime this month, I hope. If not, it'll be the first part of next month. We'll have, be having Alfred back next month uh, because right after Labor Day, of course, as you know, we've been talking about uh, uh, the dual sun with Alfred uh, and the Nibiru hoax. Uh, and if you have not listened to those radio shows, go back. All you have to go is www.ursuadams.com and listen to those. I bring this all the way back to when John Moore released this so-called August 17th date, which is two days away. But now, ironically enough, on the 14th, John says, nope, 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 it's going to happen on the 26th now. Well, what's the 26th, guys? The 188-day cycle, right? Yes. Right, exactly. So, so that's why the new date, guys, of this 26th is coming up. Now, I'm not saying that nothing's going to happen here August 17th. You know, one of the things that I said is we're probably going to see something on the 21st. I, I, I felt, you know, volcanic activity, earthquakes, those type of things are really going to start to increase by on and around the 21st. That's what I started saying months ago. And what's been happening? Major volcanic activity, major earthquake activity all over the country, seven points and above all over the country. It's happening. But be, be cautious during that period of time. And, of course, what do we see show up down at Newmar Station a little earlier, just about 11 days earlier than what I said it would, and everybody wants to call it a weather balloon or a UFO or a we're so divided. We're so divided on all of this. Can't we just, you know, and I just laugh because now MSNBC, uh, Fox News, Yahoo, all of them ran with this story that we did live on my show. I got a 408 or 480 area code here. 480 area code. Welcome to the show. Who's this? Hello, uh, Donnie J. Hey, Jay Larson, how's it going? Uh, pretty good. Uh, that wobble, I, I figured out that it's wobble at both poles. It's well, that would just like the top. It's, that, it's yeah, that, that, that would like make a lot of sense. That, that so would make a lot want, of sense. That, that little video, uh, you, you can watch, uh, watch where the sun's going by the movement because it shines off the water. Um, then, but if you watch the crescent that forms and stuff, uh, there's a crescent also that forms when dark takes over light, and it's different. So it shows that you're having a wobble from both poles, not just one pole tilting. So it, it's actually more stable that way, too. 
you hardly will ever notice it. Well, that would make sense why we're seeing the moon in so many different uh, odd spots as well. Mm -hmm. Things we're seeing the moon in one spot one day and the moon in another spot another day. And, you know, I can remember the moon when I was a little kid, you know, it was pretty much in the same spot all the time, you know. And it wouldn't mm -hmm. disappear on days on end either. <laughs> you know, you know, it, 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 so you know, if, if if that's what's happened, we're having a gradual pull shift because of this thing's coming in. Uh, and I want to get into this uh, in, into this into this book here that I promised everybody that I'm going to read tonight. Uh, but you know, it's it's uh, something's happening. I don't know if it's if it's if it's if it's a if it's a planet, if it's a star. Something's happening to our Earth that's not making much sense, and nobody and nobody is talking about it. It's quite interesting that we, you know, all of the so-called scientists out there are not talking about it. And here, here, here is the introduction to this, uh, to this, to this book. I wrote this book with much sacrifice, lying in bed ill, unable to stand up and sit down, but seeing the necessity of alerting humanity about the forthcoming cataclysm, I made a great effort. I dedicate the message to humanity as the last resort because there is nothing else to do. That was from B.M. Ravalu, who is the founder of the Eagle Foundation. I'm going to read. Let's see. we got uh, 10 minutes here. Mm, let's see here. Yeah, let's, let's, let's start in this. Let's, let's start on this, uh, and we'll... Uh, Take a break here in about ten minutes here, and maybe we can take some calls and, and see what we think about this. Herculobus, a red planet. Humanity is spellbound by the predictions of the false of, of falsely called scientists who do nothing but fill humanity with lies. Scientists distort the truth. Let us speak of Herculobus, a red planet which makes its unrelenting orbit toward the Earth. According to some accounts, scientists have calculated its weight and measured its diameter. They say it weighs so many tons as if it was a, some child's toy. It is not so. Herculobus, or red planet, is five or six times larger than Jupiter. It is an enormous planet, and nothing can stop or divert it. Well, that's kind of interesting that it's that uh, it is five, he states it's five to six times larger than Jupiter. Now, what did I say on last week's show? That it was, I believed it was one twentieth the size of the sun. Now, remember when that triangle showed up over the sun, all right? The triangle showed up over the sun. Nobody quite knew what that was when, when that weekend when all of the Soho's, uh, uh, the Soho shut down, uh, the Helio viewer shut down, uh, NASA, pretty much all, anything to do with the sun, shut down when we had this huge triangle, and then we matched it up to that crop circle in the UK, but when you, when somebody actually did a video saying that in, within that triangle, 40 different Jupiters could fit in, side that. Well, that calculation is kind of about the same. Similar. Herculobus is already here. It is the beginning of the end for the Earth. Yet the Earthlings think of Hercul Herculobus as a toy. Humanities from other planets in our solar system already know about the cat catastrophe. They are very keen to help us in order to avoid the cataclysm, but no one can stop it because this is the punishment we deserve to end so much evilness. Whoa. This is going to get deep, guys. <laughs> each planet, each world has its humanity. I am letting it, uh, letting it to be known that Herculobus is creation like our own world. It has a humanity as perverse as, as ours inhabited it. Thus the scientists, lords, should not believe they, that they may attack Herculobus and disintegrate it. That's interesting. i got to get back to that. Because there's a lot of things circulating now about the Tesla ray. And that we can somehow use the Tesla ray to beam it out into outer space 
and destroy a planet as it comes in. That's, uh, I do think that's being circulated around the Internet in different forms. All right, so going back here. Thus, the scientist lords should not believe as they may attack Herculobus and disintegrate it, because Herculobus humanity has weapons too. They would retaliate and wipe us out in the blink of an eye. If we attack them, then we will defend themselves, and our end will be far quicker. Now, I have to put a caveat on this, because as I said earlier, I have not read this. And as I said earlier on the broadcast, guys, I believe there's two timelines that we can go down. I believe that this is a warning. And if people aren't familiar with the book that I'm reading from here, it's called Herculobus or the Red Planet by V.M. Ravalu. And if you want to take a, a learn more about it, you can go to herculobus.tv, www.herculobus.tv. We'll actually be having the president of this particular um, Eagle Foundation on the show. But I wanted to get everybody familiar with where the, the visions that this author has. And that they've been distributing this book. This book has been distributed as far, the, all the far corners of the earth. And it's actually a very, very popular book. It is actually children in Ecuador, children in the UK, children in South America, South Africa, all over the world are reading this book. I don't think it's a very popular book in the U.S. because I don't think people know about it in the U.S. But that's why I volunteered. I volunteered to do a read-through on this thing, on my radio show, because I believe that it really needs to have, need, needs to be brought out because there's some really interesting things in this book. Now, with the caveat being said, some of this might not be hard, might be hard to swallow and some might look at it as kind of a doom and gloom. All right? But with that being said, I am going to take a quick break. I'm going to take a, uh, a little, um, what's we call it, uh, music break as well. We're going to come back, and we are going to read from the entire book here, starting up at the top of the hour. I guess you're listening to 32 Degrees of Insanity right here on freedomizerradio.com. If you're joining us over at www.ursuadams.com, please uh, come back. Uh, just type in www.freedomizerradio.com, and of course you can uh, join us in our wonderful chat room uh, as we have all of our regulars in there as well. Uh, and let's see here if I can find a – let's play a good song for us, something we haven't played in a while. Let's see. Nah, I'm not going to play the Black Confederation. You know what? I love it. All right, you guys. We're back here. 32 Degrees of Insanity. Uh, right here on FreedomizerRadio.com. Yeah, Big Daddy Lee is so in love with you. I love that song. It does. It really gives the underlying message of what, what I'm trying to communicate is that, you know what? The only one out there that knows what's going to happen, is God. We can only speculate and think and, 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 and try to understand what's in store for us or if there's anything in store for us at all. I find it more entertaining to speculate that there is something out there that we just don't know about, you know? But the matrix itself is a very complex one. And the multiverse, I just, I, I believe in, you know, I believe, how can I put this and put this delicately? Maybe I should just come out and say it. I do believe the evildoers will be punished. But we can't judge the evildoers because if it wasn't for the evildoers, we wouldn't be at the ascension where we are right now. Actually, this world would be kind of a boring place, wouldn't it? There really wasn't anything like evil. I just wish there wasn't so much heartache and so much stress and so much 
sadness. You know, I wish everybody could be able to live without grief and without worry, without stress. You know, I remember last year, I told everyone, one of the things I felt, you know, if I ever ran for president, <laughs> I, I, I will never, ever, ever run for president, even though, even though I think you guys would probably vote for me. <laughs> Some of you would, at least. Uh, Actually, you know what? We should do. We should do. Here we go. Tonight, I am. I am announcing my candidacy for the 2012 presidential election. I am announcing my candidacy right now for the 2012 presidential election. So, if you don't, if you don't find a candidate that you like on the, on the ballot, just write in Donnie Gilson. <laughs> That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go vote. I'm going to vote. You know, I'm going to do. I'm going to vote for the simple reason that it, it was something that my grandmother and I did all the time. What what party are you standing with? I'm standing with the, my own party. My own party. Uh, that's right. Independent. I'm an independent. If any, if, if if I was to stand in any party, it would probably be the independent party. But I there's already a presidential candidate presidential candidate for the independent party. So, so I guess I'm going to be with my own party. So anyways, going back here, uh, my grandmother and I would go vote every, you know, every four years or every two years, you know, whenever we, you know, also do our, our votes, you know, for uh, different major elections. But our main thing, our main, our main thing was to go vote for president. And um, that was the thing that I did with her. And so, in respect for my grandmother, who died last year, in 2011, early 2011, I'm going to carry on that tradition. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to vote. I, I will go out and vote. I, I said I wasn't going to, but I thought about it. And I was like, yeah, what I like, that, that, it's kind of fun going out and being part of the public and, you know, and voting. And also, it's a good way to promote freedom, I <laughs> Because it'll be a totally different animal here in, in Nevada. <laughs> Yeah, it should be a, a everyone write Donnie Gilson. Exactly. Everybody write in Donnie Gilson for president. Because I said, if I was president, one of the things that I believe that, that every American should, you know, especially because I don't believe that we are trillions of dollars in debt. I do not believe it. I believe a lot of this is just a masquerade. I believe that we have to have a full audit of the Fed, which I believe the audit that we are going to have it's not going to be a fair audit. And we're going to get back into this. Don't worry about this. I'm just talking to this Herculovus thing. Well, we'll get back into this. But I just I want to talk about some current things here for the next five minutes or so. Um, I, I, I believe that everybody on within the United States, even I think throughout the world, throughout the world should be giving, given enough money to survive as a divine right. That's what God, God put gold and put these things on our, on this earth for, I mean, how did that, I mean, you know, there were, if you really thought about it, if you really thought about it, all the money that's been stolen from us and our ancestors over the years from different organizations, they owe us. I mean, my grandmother's house was taken away from her at 82 years old, or 86 years old. She died when she was 92. So five years to her death, the, the bank came in and foreclosed on her home because, of, fortunately, my father had a gambling problem and wasn't paying the bills. And, you know, he, 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 he thought he could win it back, but unfortunately he got too far in debt. And then, of course, we tried to go in and save it, and the bank wouldn't even let us save it. It's a very sad situation. But yet, if you think about it, all of the all of the interest and all of the money that uh, that we all the money my grandmother paid into, you know, it's, it's just ridiculous. And I, even when we came over here from England, we lost a lot of stuff. 
We lost property over the UK. I know. I know that. The sacrifice to come here to the United States. That went went where? To the Queen, I'm sure. And I know when we escaped Ireland in the early 1800s, we had plenty of property there, but we had to escape Ireland because, of course, according to my grandmother, we were wanted. <laughs> but going back to what I think is everybody on this world, on this earth, deserves to have enough money to survive. And I, I threw out a number. I, I said anywhere between 36000 to $50,000 would be a perfect amount for people to survive. They could pay their rent. They could pay their, their utilities. They could have food on the table. And that's every person now. Every person. The stresses would be gone. The evildoers of this world would be gone. There'd be no reason for so much evil and so much stress. Their crime levels would go down drastically. Because there would be no reason to thieve from steal from others. And if you made any money up and above, that's your own doing. You go ahead, go make it. Invest the money in whatever, you know. If you want to smoke it all the way and crack, go do it. I don't care. We're not going to get any more. You're responsible for the rest. But if you're a like, if you're if you're a good, honest person, and and I fully believe that education should be taken care of. Right now, I'm trying to get you know. Of course, you know. I, I said earlier, I'm 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 ready to go to school, back to school. Although I got to come up with a with a with a grant to get my transcripts released because of an old debt that I owe to my old school, and they're holding my transcripts hostage over $1,000, even though I've paid that institution over $30,000. And all those grades are mine. Yeah, I just found out I owe them $1,000. Kind of weird, you know? So i got to come up with a grant, shoot that off, school, get my transcripts back, then I go back to school. But I think education itself is another uh, is another thing that, you know, kids today, oh my gosh, you know, I mean, when, our, when my, my parents went, you know, my dad went to, to college, to grad, he had his four-year degree. I, was like, I, think, I think he said it was like 2800 bucks, something like that, all together that he spent in the 60s to get his finished degree. Even in the 70s, it was a little bit under five, $6,000 to get a degree. Now, a, a, a child coming out of a four-year college, $50,000 is not a problem. Not a problem to be in that far debt. And nobody's getting any jobs. Unemployment's still rising. We haven't seen that change you know we see a little bit here and there Reno I mean Nevada we're at 11 something percent unemployment highest foreclosures foreclosure for, foreclosure rate in the United States we're like in the top five no jobs people have to think outside the the box to become entrepreneurs and I have no problem with being an entrepreneur. I think that's great. I think, I think everybody should have the opportunity to become an entrepreneur. But another thing that I'm seeing is is rents are astronomical. You go out to the Bay Area to rent a one bedroom in San Francisco, you're going to spend close to two thousand dollars a month, anywhere between fifteen hundred two thousand dollars a month. But the cost of living is Nowhere near that. It used to be it was 33% of your income went to your housing. Now it's over 50% of your income going towards housing, unless you're an owner. And it's so hard to own any type of property nowadays. I just don't want to give the money out. It's so hard to get our hands around any type of money right now. 
really, really hard. And we're going to talk about money in this book here called Herculobus and the Red Planet as I read more on this by P.M. Robilou, uh, who actually, uh, guys, uh, the, the writer of this book uh, was a, Columbia, a Colombian New Age, they called him a Colombian New Age author. His real name is Joaquin Enrique Amorotka Balbuna. He was uh, uh, born in 1926. He died in the year 2000. And um, we'll learn more about him, especially when I have uh, John Poole on my show here within the next couple of weeks. It'll be very nice to uh, learn more about him. Now, I'm not a proponent of New Age, never have been. Uh, but I believe that there are some truths within the New Age movement. I mean, the, I believe in esoteric. I believe in the mystery schools. I believe Jesus went through the mystery schools. So to understand so, where New Age spawned out of in the early you know, so-called New Age movement that happened at the end of the 1800s, early 1900s, you know, even Edward Casey was kind of New Age, I believe there's some truth in there, but they're missing the element. And what's that element? Of course, it's Jesus Christ. And that's why I say you got, you know, I, I was watching this show today, uh, this commercial for this particular church here, and uh, and, and talk about fear mongering. <laughs> I was shocked when I saw this. It, all of a sudden, I saw devastation. It's a you know, 30-second commercial, and it's, you know, you're seeing the the world blow up. There's this, this, this voice ever goes, one third of the population will will burn, will die. But you need need to now. There's only one way to uh, to avoid this cataclysm, and that is through the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's exactly what the guy sound like. Exactly. Become born again right now. Here's the church. <laughs> I'm just like whoa. Well, we all know I'm born again, and, you know, I, 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 I did that as obedience to when I said yes to the Lord Jesus Christ in, 19, er, in 2006, when I was part of Eagle Brook Church back home in Minnesota. But a lot of people think, you know, once you're saved, you're always saved. No, 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 no. You could stray. Once you said yes to you, Jesus Christ, not, not that you can't stray away. You always must... Keep repenting. All right, so going back to this here, and uh, I'm going to go back to this last paragraph here. Humanities from other planets in our solar system already know about this catastrophe. If you're just joining me, uh, guys, with 32 Degrees of Insanity, here on FreedomizerRadio.com, I'm reading for this book, Herculobus or Red Planet, VM Rabalu. And what I was talking about in current events, as far as money is concerned, it's going to make a lot of sense as we read through this book. So if you're trying to call in tonight, tonight I probably won't be taking calls. Uh, I might, if we get through this, this next hour. I'm going to kind of go commercial free for the next hour or so. Uh, so sit back, grab a chair, relax. We're going to go into this. I'm going to try my hardest not to stop. <laughs> get out with it already, Dunny. But, you know, me, I love the gavel. So anyways, here we go. Humanities from other planets in our solar system already know about this, about this catastrophe. They are very keen to help us in order to avoid the cataclysm. But no one can stop it because this is the punishment we deserve to end so much evilness. Each planet, each world has its humanity. And I am letting it be known that Herculobus is a creation like our own world. It has a humanity just as perverse as, as ours inhabited it. That the scientists, Lord, should not believe that they may attack Herculobus and disintegrate it, because Herculobus humanity has weapons too. They would retaliate and wipe us in a blink of an eye. If we attack them, they would defend themselves, and our end will be far quicker. It comes to pass that in the to and fro of life, everything returns to its beginning or to its end. In Atlantis, the same thing happens although to a lesser degree. In the, uh, the uh, silical return, our planet cannot ever uh, even bear Herculobus to pass close by, to shatter into pieces. 
This is unknown to the scientists, Lords, because they believe themselves to be very powerful with their weapons, capable of destroying such giant planets. They are very wrong. The disintegration of the famous Tower of Babel that the scientists have built will, ha will, will happen in a short time. They have already finished it. The negative consequences now come for all humanity. The scientists can deny this with their, with their theories, as they are doing what they have done, distorting the truth out of nothing more than pride, vanity, and the desire for power. They will laugh like brain donkeys because they are incapable of measuring the consequences of their actions. They're, they're plagued planet Earth with atomic bombs to take control of it and fail to take into account that God and, his, and, and justice exist. God will level everything. You cannot speak to beasts about God because they brag. They deny God with their actions. Scientists believe themselves to be God. This is not so. Those so-called powerful nations will be brought to ruins, but economically and morally because money will soon disappear. Hunger and misery will finish them off. Those nations will not withstand an upheaval, and they will be left petrified and fright with fr uh, petrified. I'm sorry, with fright, and I'm reading kind of in the dark here. Uh, petrified with fright and terror. Then they will truly realize that the divine justice exists to punish perversity. The whole world is correct, caught up in a seeking money at all of its costs. Exactly the same happened in Atlantis. The god of the epoch was money, which is portrayed by religions as a golden calf. Likewise, in this speech, money is God. Humanity is totally mistaken. Well, let me just stop here. What have I always said God is, according to the currency? Gold, oil, and drugs. That's money, God, gold, oil, and drugs. Certainly not our divine God. The rich who howl with so much power now will be will be the most unfortunate because with with no one to sell or buy from, they will be able to do nothing with their huge sums of money. They will get down on their knees crying, begging for a dish of food, and they will howl like dogs. Man, this guy is serious. Yeah. Oh! Wow. All right. When Herculovus gets closer to Earth, when it sets apart with the sun, lethal, lethal epidemics will begin to spread all over the world. Those doctors in official science will not know what kind of illness they are and, and how to cure them. Well, that's interesting with all the zombie epidemic thing going around right now. Weird things happening, like, uh, who was it, um, who was the country singer, guys? Ch chat room, tell me who the country singer was that just got pulled over DWI, uh, not Hank Williams Jr., but, uh, not Travis Tritt. Who was it? Everybody in chat room tell me who it was. Anyways, it was a country singer that, uh, uh, that was, uh, pulled over, and he was found, you know, in, uh, not Kenny Rogers, no, no, God, I can't think of him. He's like a big guy. He's like one of the huge country singers. I can't even think of his name right now. Uh, Randy Travis. There we go. Thank you, guys. Ah, man, I had it on the tip of my thumb. Randy Travis. You know, Randy Travis, um, <laughs> Randy Travis got, uh, uh, you know, pulled over, or was, you know, found laying naked out in the middle of a uh, road and he got bailed out by some band. What, Randy Travis ain't got no money to get himself bailed out of, out of jail? I thought that was kind of weird. I was like, where did all Randy Travis's money go, you know? But yeah, you know, he gets, he gets bailed out of jail, but you know, nobody can, re he was like delusional. I guess he showed up at a supermarket naked, wanting to buy cigarettes, and he was like, oh, Lord, you money, and it was, I don't know, man. It's trippy what's happening in this world, you know. And of course, we have all this zombie stuff happening. Uh, people eating people, and yeah, it's just weird. So, so similar to what this guy is talking about here in the book, they will be helpless before such ep epidemics because of the overwhelming hunger and the unbearable heat. Wow, life on our planet will begin to disappear. 
and then humanity shall have to eat their fellow beings, cadavers. Oh, what did we just say, man? Zombie thing, heat, record heats this summer. Craziness. The moment of tragedy, of darkness will come. Tremors, earthquakes, and tidal waves. Human beings will become mentally unbalanced. Donnie Gilson. <laughs> Sorry, guys, I had to throw that out. I, I Sometimes I had to poke fun at my own self, you know? Uh, <laughs> everybody's probably laughing in, in the chat room right now. You know, I, I, the only way I can read something like this, guys, is to add humor to it. Because of the serious underness of because it's so true. It's so true. How, you know... I mean, this is stuff that's happening all around us. And people are really mentally unbalanced right now. Everybody is. Everybody's off their kilter, including me. I mean, all of us are, are a little bit uh, loco, man. In the face of danger, the total insane mass will throw themselves over the uh, uh, precipice. The, the human race will disappear. There will be... There will be no life left on the planet. The land will sink into the ocean because the humanity has reached the greatest degree of perversity. They even want to pass on the evil to other planets, something that they were that that will not be allowed to do. Well, you know what? I have a. We are perverted. We are really perverted, guys. Our whole. I mean, we talk about sex on this show all the time. Nikki show is filled with it, uh, but, uh, and, you know, everybody else, you know, we all have a perverse men mindset, we all curse, we all swear, we're all good for nothing, it's really, all of us, and I don't know if this is what God had for in, in store for us, it kind of reminds me of, 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 of what was stated in the Bible, you know? I mean, Sodom and Gomorrah, you know? The scientists in the whole world are full of, of panic, even though the destruction has not yet begun. But the fear of God does exist in any... Uh, the, but the fear of God does not exist in any earthquake. Scientists believe that they are the lords, the masters of life, and that they are powerful. Now they will see that there is indeed divine justice which judges us according to our deeds. What I affirmed in this book is a very short. What, what I affirm in this book is a very short-term prophecy, because I have evidence about the end of the planet. I know it. I'm not attempting to frighten, but to forewarn, because I feel sorrow for this poor humanity. Since these events are coming soon, there is no time to waste in illusionary things. I repeat that. What I affirm in this book is a very short-term prophecy. Because I have evidence about the end of the planet. I know it. I'm not attempting to frighten, but to forewarn. Because I feel sorrow for this poor, poor humanity. Since these events are coming soon, there is no time to waste in illusionary things. We've all been warning. All of us have been warning. Chapter 2. The Atomic Test and the Ocean. And just to go into some current stuff, uh, I don't know if you've heard, three nuclear reactors have been shut down. Uh, actually, uh, Prairie Island in Minnesota has been cut down, been shut down. Uh, don't know what's happening with those right now. That's a developing story. Um, Fukushima still, big thing happening in Fukushima. Don't know what's happening quite there. But what I don't get about Fukushima, here's the thing I don't get about Fukushima. And why sometimes I wonder if this thing is a false flag or not. Is if this thing is bigger than what happened in Chernobyl, then why have why why? I mean, Chernobyl is. I mean, I've seen pictures of Chernobyl, but I've seen pictures of Fukushima. It doesn't look anything like it. Chernobyl, I think, was a, 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 an event. I don't know quite about Fukushima anymore. I don't know. We'll we'll, we'll see how that 
how that develops. And that's why I wonder, you know, it's because sometimes when people take take these Geiger counters out there and they get, you know, get to these readings, you know, about radiation. I mean, I don't, you know, I'm in Nevada, so I'm on the West Coast. You know, maybe why everybody's going insane is because we're all radiated and we're all going to turn into zombies or something. I don't know. The atomic test of the oceans. We are in a blind alley. We have already spoken of Herculobus rather su uh, superficially so as not to frighten or alarm people. Let us consider another destructive and deadly danger caused by the atomic test in our ocean, which no one can hinder. And that's true. I don't know if you ever saw that footage of the, of the uh, of that huge explosion that, that took place out in the Gulf where all the Navy vessels were out there, and you saw this this explosion and this just big, huge wall of water uh, shoot up, and it looked like a huge tidal wave. Can you imagine if they set off a nuclear explosion in the Gulf? That would that would uh, one would probably crack all of those methane uh, cracks that are still there. Or maybe the explosions that they're already doing are causing these these cracks, and while we're seeing all these sinkholes as well. I mean that that thing that's happening in Louisiana is is quite scary. There are large, very profound. Like I'm, it's like I read this before. No, I didn't. And listen to this. There are large, very profound cracks along the seabed already making contact with fire inside the Earth. These cracks are due entirely to the atomic test that scientists in their countries believe themselves powerful are carrying out without measuring the consequences of the barbaric acts that have been committed and are they're committing against our planet and humanity. You have to remember, this book was written... In what was it written here? Nineteen something. Nineteen ninety-eight. The first Spanish edition for this was was written in nineteen ninety-eight, and this sounds like today. All right, let's see here. Where was I? Um, are carrying out without measuring the consequences of their barbaric acts and have committed and are uh, committed against our planet and humanity. The inner fire of the Earth has already begun to make contact with seawater. Cyclones have begun to occur. The gringo lords call these a phenomenon called El Nino. You know, that's interesting. This thing was written in 1998, and I remember I moved to San Francisco in 1996, October 10th, October 31st, 1996. I remember that was in the Castro. Uh, they had the Halloween parade going on. And that next year was the first time I ever heard of the word El Nino. Because in 1997, in the San Francisco Bay Area, we had the worst El Nino they said on record. That was the first time I ever heard that word, ever. These gringos call this phenomenon an El Nino. It is not El Nino, but the contract of the inner fire of the earth with the seawater, which is spreading through the ocean. As more cracks develop, there will be tidal waves, earthquakes, horrifying things in the ocean and on land. The access on the earth is already out of its position because of these tests. What did Jay Larson just say moments ago? We're on a wobble, both north and south. The axis of the Earth is already out of its position because of the test. And with the tremors, earthquakes, and tidal waves, it will finally slip away and the sinking will come. No coastal city shall escape being swept away into the ocean. Do you disbelieve, my, my dear reader, that the, the grounds will sink suddenly? This is long, slow, and distress painful process humanity must undergo. The land will sink into the ocean piece by piece until it reaches its end. And so that's already happening. The scientific lords cannot calculate the outcome of the atrocities they come that, that have committed against the creation, because they too will be victims of their own inv uh, in, uh, inventiveness. Monsters, savage beasts already exist in the ocean bottoms. Uh -oh gestated and unnourished with atomic energy. That, we're seeing that, too. I mean, remember, 
all these weird things are like the thing that happened in, in New York recently underneath the Brooklyn Bridge we saw this weird monster come up and it doesn't look like no, nothing that we've ever seen and then of course you know we, we see these one eyed uh, 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 sharks and stuff I was watching Shark Week this week on Discovery two words Shark Week great gotta watch it awesome all right, so monsters, savage beasts already existed in the ocean bottom. Also, I don't know if you guys remember, speaking about Shark Week, a few years ago, I want to say it was maybe seven or eight years ago, they sent a probe down to, I think it was 36,000 feet, sent it down, and reached the bottom. I don't know, I think it was 36,000 feet. I want to say it was 36,000 feet. And it reached the bottom and it actually got chopped on by something. <clears throat> and when they brought it back up, they saw the damage to the probe, and the picture film that they got back was a picture of an eye. And they said that, the, the, that it was some sort of shark that was existing at the bottom of the ocean that was as, as large as, as possibly a uh, killer whale, or not a killer whale, um, uh, why am I not uh, the ones the the humpback whale? Look at the pressure. Thirty six thousand feet. Man, I've I've dove at nine hundred feet. And I know what that feels like. Imagine thirty six thousand feet. They have become atomic beasts. The heating of the sea waters will make them rise and seek refuge. They will ascend on coastal cities. They will ra raise everything. Or they, they will raise everything. Houses, buildings ships and people. Man-made bullets will be of no use except to uh, enrage them even more. What I'm saying here will happen soon. And this is not all. From the contract of the seawaters with the inner fire, an awesome vapor will emerge from the boiling waters. That airplane shall not fly, nor ships sail, and these vapors will cloud the sun. Wow, that's interesting. Total darkness will come and life on our planet will end. Dear readers, I do not advise you to flee because there is no place to go. That's, you know, that's very true. I was reading, I was reading this article about, you know, kind of the new um, Navy uh, map. And it was, it actually discussed all of the, all of the 50 states. And there was no place to go. I mean, it was really, it was like, you know, here in Reno, for example, they're like, well, you know, Reno is surrounded by mountains, and it will be cut off from the rest of the world, and there will be no, you know, we'll basically die of starvation here in Reno. And, uh, you know, of course, you live down in Los Angeles, you're going to float into the ocean. It was, you know, might as well just stay where you are and, and go with the graces of God. You know, that's where I say, just stay where you are. Uh, don't buy into uh, movie to, uh, movie places and all that stuff because if this happens, it's half faith. It's half faith. The scientific lords ignore the consequences they provoked with their atomic explosions and experiments in the ocean. Therefore, no matter how scientific they may be, they are ignorant, savage beasts who, in, uh, with, who invented devices which destroy humanity and themselves. No, it's true. A bunch of kids that got fire back in the 40s and think that we're, uh, or back in the 30s, actually, I think it was, the, you know, and we uh, think that we're some sort of gods. The atomic energy has contaminated the whole ocean and its inhabitants. Thus, when, we are when we're nourishing ourselves with fish or other marine animals, we are, we, are using, we are contaminating ourselves as well. It is advisable not to consume them. That's why I don't eat fish, guys. I do not eat fish. No, thank you. And I always said, I always said, when I worked up on the fishing boats in Alaska, you know, I worked up in Dutch Harbor, and I was catching Pacific cod. This was the early 90s I worked up there. I did it because I don't eat fish because I know exactly how I process the fish. So I don't, uh, I don't eat fish. But, you know, I saw some strange-looking fish back then. And now I think about it, they were really strange. Because I, I worked, when I worked, my first boat I worked on on the fishing boats uh, I worked on this Japanese processing boat. Well, it was an old Japanese processing boat. It was all Americans that worked on it, but you know, it was this, it was made for Japanese labor. And I worked. One of my first jobs was to work was to work in the live tank. 
Oh my gosh, guys, have you ever worked in a live tank? That is the craziest, most disgusting job you'll ever have. Basically what you do is we, we, we would catch fish, 50,000 pounds worth of fish at a time. We bring it up on, on a net and we drop it into what we call a live tank. Okay? My job was to get inside that live tank and sort the fish and kick them out onto the processing line. And I remember some of the fish that I saw had like the biggest, beaviest eyes on blue fish. Oh, man, that was a weird, trippy looking fish that looked like aliens to me. It was crazy stuff. The scientific lords ignore the consequences that provoke with their atomic explosions or experiments in the ocean. Therefore, no matter how scientific they may be, they're ignorant, savage beasts who, invent, who invented devices which destroy humanity and themselves. The atomic energy has contaminated the whole ocean and its inhabitants. Thus, we, are, we nourish ourselves with our fish and other marine animals. We contaminate ourselves as well. It is advisable not to consume fish. The ocean being a lively body inhales and exhales. When exhaling, it pollutes the oxygen we breathe in all the vegetation. This widespread contamination will cause the mutation of human organism. Monstrous children, monstrous children will be born that will shock the entire world. Well, just recently on one of the shows on, uh, you know, we're seeing these two-headed people and all of this. We're, we're seeing, you know, uh, even recently down in Mexico, they found an alien reptilian being that they have no idea where the DNA, where this thing was, you know, does, it doesn't match any human DNA. Everything first crystallizes in the superior in the superior dimensions and later into physical realm. If one looks in other superior dimensions, our planet has already disappeared from there. Whoa. What we see is a yellow colored quagmire, like a pot of boiling clay and water devoid of any life. No life of any species is seen there, neither plants, nor animals, nor humans. It also remains for this cataclysm to occur in the third dimension or physical world for all to disappear. The scientists and intellectuals will laugh out loud like donkeys braying about what I say, but when the moment of tragedy arrives, they will be the most, be the most cowardly ones. They will cry not knowing what to do or where to go. I, I, I kind of agree with that statement right there. They are going to be the ones that cry because we're preparing ourselves right now. If it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. But well, at least we are entertaining the thought that it might happen, and we're preparing our souls for it, for something like this to happen. I would rather be prepared spiritually and psychologically for something like that and to laugh at it and say, hey, bring it on, than to cower. Then what do we expect from humanity? We await its end. The gentlemen who falsely call themselves scientists are indeed scientists, but destructive. They are not constructive because they are science for destroying scientists for destroying all life. I ask the scientists, Lords, who are the ones that bray so hard? What formula do you find to avoid the problems that are threatening to destroy humanity and our planet? No formula exists, and so we wait upon the cataclysm. Or if we have an effective formula, formula can you let us know about it? Chapter 3. 1040, 8-15-2012. You're listening to FreedomizerRadio.com. 32 Degrees of Insanity, Donnie Gilson, reading Herculobus, or Red Planet, by Z.M. Robilai. This is a good one. The Extraterrestrials. <clears throat> I have seen magazines and movies put out by the gringo gentlemen <laughs> wanting people to believe that the non-existence of extraterrestrials, but they are wrong. They cannot block my sight. They cannot fool me, and there is even a lesser chance of them making me believe that they're silly theories and mean imaginations as they are doing with humanity. Just as they are doing with Herculobus and its rapidly approaching Earth, putting it down, even daring to give the weight and measurement of it. They are doing the same with the extraterrestrials. They want people to believe that extraterrestrials are like gorillas or animals. It is a great lie. It is 100% false because the inhabitants of the other of other planets of our solar system and galaxy are super beings and wise. 
I have dealt with extraterrestrials many times. I have been to Venus and Mars, consequently moving in my astral body, and I can be and, and can faithfully testify to what marvels their inhabitants are. I lack the words to describe their wisdom, culture, and their angelic ways of life. Uh, I'm still quite on the fence about the whole ET thing. I think they're all demonic um, because I think they were the downfall, downfall of Atlantis, Lamaria. If they wanted to get involved with us, you know, I think they kind of let us down the wrong path. I don't know, you know. I, I'm still on the fence. I believe the Patal, which are interdimensional beings, light beings, I believe those are angelic beings. Those are the god line, the god source. Okay, life on planet Venus. Ooh, good. Another uh, area here. I'm going to descri describe the soil, nature, uh, I'm going to describe the soil, nature, their way of life, and how they work. The soil on Venus is not compact or heavy, like our Earth, but is rather light, soft soil. The stones differ from ours as well. They lack the density of our materials. On Venus, one can lift a stone that would weigh, weigh tons on Earth because the rocks are light and made of soft material. The trees are not giants, and the vegetation has no thorns. Not blind weeds block the way in the, in the, no blind weeds block the way in the mountains one can go to those mountains without needing to carry a machete or a knife because there is nothing to cut. There are no dangers anywhere. With regards to the ocean, it is completely blue, like a very quiet lagoon that is utterly still. The ocean has no tides without waves. One can see into the depths without needing any artificial device. The fish are extremely tame and unafraid of people. There are sectors of the ocean where the inhabitants nourish the fish with many vitamins. When they need to consume one, the Venetians uh, see the Venetians, I should say, see which one is the largest and which one they wish to use, and put into the net carefully without frightening other fish. They take them out and gut them out. The fish are transported to a revolving tank of very clean waters by means of pulleys, and they go through a unique cleaning process. This is done without touching them with the hands. The fish then. Uh, are pulverized and natural vitamins are added. Fishes are one of the food Venetians eat. Venetians do not eat any other kind of meat. Fruit trees are grown at the flat roofs of the houses in flat pots where the soils of meat are well fertilized so they bear food. Venetians wait for the fruit to be well seasoned, ripened before plucking them. They pick them with the advice or with a device without touching the front with their hands. Uh, then the fruits go through pipelines to come to some very clean revolving water tanks where they undergo special cleaning. After being washed, they go through another tube to some machines where they are pulverized. From there, they pass into a container where mm -hmm. over, more natural vitamins and no chemicals are added. I've never read anything on, on Venus. So it's quite interesting. I think I'm going to move forward on this, uh, on Venus. We, if you guys want to read that part of Venus, because uh, it goes on here, I think you guys should uh, definitely take a look at uh, and order this book. Uh, we're going to read about the life on planet Mars right now. I'm going to take a quick break here, real quick, because uh, I want to get into the money part of this. Uh, it's... Uh, the life on planet Mars, what we're going to be talking about here, as I go on here, I think that's a very important thing, especially with the, I don't know if anybody's been on my Facebook page as of late, uh, but the, if you saw those two, you know, from the alien movies, I've got the two aliens with a picture of Mars, and they're holding it, and the rover Curiosity is taking pictures of the so-called picture, uh, and uh, yeah, nothing's out there. Uh, so let's see here. Yeah, we'll do Mars. We'll do death. And uh, we will go into the final thoughts on this. And we'll take some calls as well uh, here at 347-324-3704 in the last hour on what we've been talking about. So, again, uh, guys, you're just joining us on 32 Degrees of Insanity. Crookie Lovis of the Red Planet by B.M. Rabelow. Uh, we are reading some excerpts of that particular 
uh, I'm, I'm more shocked that it doesn't have more about Herculovus in this, uh, but maybe as we read more into this, uh, we'll find more. But we're going to talk about Mars when we come back here. Uh, if you'd like to give a call in, feel free. Uh, looks like, you know what, I've got a couple callers here. I'm going to bring on 313 here Eric, before we go on a break. 313, welcome to the show. Hi, how are you? Hi, who's this? Uh, my name is Angel. Hi, how are you? I'm just fine. I came across your show, 32 Degrees of Insanity with Connie Gilson, and I uh -huh. noticed that you were a Freemason as well as a Knights nice Templar. And I've been approached about joining the Eastern Stars, and I want uh -huh. to ask you a question about it. Now, are you, uh, are, is a member of your family uh, Masonic? Uh, no, it's a guy um, who he's a 32nd degree Mason, and he said that he liked my integrity and thought that I would be a great representative of um, the Masonry, and he decided well, to refer me over. Well, um, from my understanding, and I, 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 I know some people that are in the Eastern Star, uh, but from what my understanding is, is to join the Eastern Star, you have to either be married to a Mason or a uh, daughter or um, a relative of a Mason uh, to be brought in. That may have changed. I'm not quite sure uh, if that has changed. That was the, the guideline uh, before. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's always worth uh, going to take a look at it. Uh, the Eastern Star is, you know, a completely different uh, animal than uh, than Freemasonry. Uh, it kind of goes down the same guidelines of, of what we talk about in Masonry. However, they have their own ritual, they have their own teachings, uh, and so I'm not. I have an old Eastern Star uh, ritual book, uh, but I've never really, you know, I've read a couple chapters in it. But uh, you know, it, it's it's interesting if it's, if it's something you wanted to start looking into. Uh, maybe they have now opened the doors uh, to non non members or non family members of the Masonic Order and to uh, increase membership, which would be a blessing. I, I think that uh, I, I'm a I'm a full proponent of females getting involved in masonry. I'm a full promoter of that. Uh, it's something that I believed uh, should have been done a long time ago. Uh, I don't believe that females should have ever been segregated from masonry. So if if it's something that you want to find and learn about the esoteric side of masonry, I would, I'd fully support that for you. Okay, and see, here's my thing. This is the reason I called in is because there's been controversy with conspiracy theorists about uh, Masonic organizations and Eastern mm -hmm. stars uh, being uh, part of the Illuminati and Satanic. And mm -hmm. I did have an opportunity to go through the ceremony, and I did notice the Bohemians, which is supposed to be uh, representative of the uh, Satanist. And I am having a spiritual struggle as to whether or not I want to maintain membership in this organization if it is Satanic. I don't know if you've ever heard anything about Knights nice Templar or Freemasons um, being considered um, representatives of the Illuminati. And if you have, can you uh, clarify any discrepancies with this for my peace of mind as it relates to um, maintaining membership of this organization? All right. Well, first off, no, masonry is not satanic. <laughs> uh, I, I, I am a 32nd degree Freemason. I am a Knights Templar. Uh, and um, I have been a part of the organization since 06. Uh, I am also a Christian uh, as well, and I'm a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, with that being stated, uh, there are, you know, there are, you know, the beautiful thing about masonry is, you know, there are all kinds of different uh, religions or, or thought processes. The only thing that you need to to, to, to have a belief in is a, in a higher power. Now, who that higher power is in your belief is up to you uh, in masonry. Of course, my higher power is, of course, the Lord Jesus Christ and his Father, God, you know. Uh, and that is my, my, my belief. Um, I have never seen Baphomet in any, any uh, uh, ritual uh, as, 
as, as far as masonry is concerned. Uh, and that's, uh, you know, I can reveal that without revealing any secrets of, of masonry. A lot of illustrations have, have shown in regards to Templars back in the 1800s and early 1800s uh, in regards to Baphomet being carried in and all of that stuff during Knights Templar rituals. That is, you know, those those were illustrations. They're not true. Um, I don't even think that there's, you know, my research has never brought me back to Baphomet, even though I don't believe Baphomet itself is satanic. I've never thought that. Um, you know, of course, Baphomet is, is, is supposed to be in its, its own its own category. Uh, and uh, I have never feared Baphomet. I fear Satan, of course. I fear Satan, but I, I have faith that, that, uh, that uh, uh, God will protect me from that. Now, as far as your question as, as the Illuminati is concerned, well, the Illuminati did infiltrate masonry uh, back in the 1700s. Uh, it is, it is, you know, it is true. There is a relationship between masonry and the Illuminati. However, when uh, President George Washington clearly stated in a letter that he wrote in regards to the relationship between the Illuminati and Freemasonry, there is none. I mean, it was basically we've been infiltrated by the by the Illuminati. Uh, you know, I, I went through my 32 degrees. I remember because I'm, I'm very good friends with Leo Zagami, and Leo Zagami is not only a 33 degree Freemason, but is also part of the Italian Illuminati. And uh, you know, I I you know was seeking light as well and further light. And I remember you know I, I was invited to join that sect night walked away from it. It was something I did not want to be a part of. However, uh, that Illum you know, there's there's differences in Illuminati. You know, I believe there is an evil part of Illuminati. There is uh, the 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 light, the good part of Illuminati. And then there's, you know, the Illuminati playing all sides of the coin. You gotta remember what the word illuminate Illuminati means is the eliminated ones, the enlightened ones. And I have always believed that they were the gatekeepers to knowledge and truth. Uh, and uh, they, like I was talking about earlier on my show, they have kind of gone down a wrong course. They have gone down kind of a, you know, if you want to call it an evil road or a darker route, and to maintain this power over humanity. Well, this is now what God intended, and God's stripping away that power now. So that's why we're seeing such a division within masonry. Um, I'm actually going to be doing a show coming up very soon, uh, in regards to this division that's happening in masonry, I was talking about on my show on Monday how I've kind of walked away from masonry for right now because I, I think there's too much division happening. There's too much politics. There's an agenda. And I'm not really kind of keen on that. And until that is rectified, until that is satisfied in my heart, then I really don't want much to do with it. Not saying that, that masonry is bad or anything to that point because I would have never been where I am right now without understanding masonry. You know, my grand you know, I'm five generations deep as Masons. You know, my grandmother was an Eastern star, uh, my grandfather was a Mason, my great great grandfather was a Mason, my gra my great grandfather was a Mason, my father skipped Masonry, uh, because he was the Vietnam War and all of that. And I the only reason why I joined Masonry is because my grandmother told me about it. And so that was one of the reasons just to fulfill a, a family legacy was the reason why I join masonry and every time i've you know anything that i've partaked in as far as ritual is concerned as far as knowledge is concerned nothing has been satanic nothing i have seen or or experienced in anything that would would give me the line that i would say this is a satanic organization no okay thank you so much and i really appreciate your time to clear things you're, up for you're me. very welcome Th thanks for calling in i appreciate it Again, guys, you know, the, you know, that's wow. I don't talk about masonry much anymore. Uh, and, you know, we bring it up here and there, but I really don't talk about it much. It was kind of interesting that the caller called in and you know asked about Eastern Star. I don't know how she went through a ritual. I don't think that she did. She probably witnessed something that looked kind of like a ritual. But if if it was an Eastern Star ritual, you have to be part of the Eastern Star to be involved in ritual. Same thing goes in, as far as Masonic is concerned. Uh, if you want to, you know, to, you first have to go through your entered apprentice. You go through your fellow craft, of course, your master, master mason, and then of course you can go either the York or Scottish Rite, or you can do both, which I did. And uh, you know, one of you know several of us have even thought about 
developing the Gnostic leg, which would be the third leg of masonry, which I believe would involve both female and male masons. Uh, with that being said, we're going to come back here. I'm 32 Degrees of Insanity. Thanks for calling in. It's always nice to talk about masonry once in a while. Just to put the, the squash. And also 313, if you're listening, uh, a, a really good book to read um, is The Elders of Zion. And that's a book that I recommend for anybody to read, which really squashes the whole thought of the Luciferian thing. Of, cor of course, what Albert Pike talked about, Lucifer and morals and dogma. You know, I might not agree with Albert Pike. Um, and, you know, he is what he is. And, uh, uh, you know, he wrote Morals and Dogma. Only reason why I went through the Scottish Rite was because of a friend of mine, you know, wanted to go through the degrees, knowing the guy since I was 13. The reason why I get into Masonry, the only, the, the main reason why I got into Masonry is to become a Knight Templar, a Knight of Christ, a Christian Knight. And I succeeded in that. I became a Knight. I was knighted. You know, I, I, you can call me a Sir Knight. I really am. I'm a Sir Knight Donnie Gilson. I, I am. I am a Knight's Templar. I am, a, I am at the highest level of masonry, or of, of, of masonry in the York Rite. I'm an equivalent to a 33 on the York Rite. I'm not a 33 on the Scottish Rite, but I'm equivalent on the York Rite as a Knight's Templar, as the highest you can become. And I went through that, and I am a Knight's, Knight of Christ. And I am, uh, I, I will always be a warrior for the Lord Jesus Christ. And with that being said, we'll be right back here on 32 Degrees of Saturday, right here on FreedomizerRadio.com. Had it, folks. All right, we're back here, 32 Degrees of Insanity, 1101 of the PM, 815, <coughs> 2012. We have been, uh, last couple of hours, we, you know, of course, you're just joining us. You can always listen to the archive show. People have always asked me, um, how do I listen to the archive shows of old 32 Degrees of Insanity? How, you know, instead of having to wait for you to upload it to YouTube. Well, it's really easy, guys. You can go to www.blogtalkradio.com. And in the search engine, you can write in Ursu Adams, U-R-S-U-A-D-A-M-S, or 32 Degrees of Insanity, and it'll bring up every single show that I have ever produced uh, since I started with Freedomizer a little over a year ago today. So, really easy. If you want to listen to the old archive shows, including last Monday night's show, uh, you, which hasn't gone up yet, which I think a lot of people should listen to because there's a lot of really important information that was in that show. You know, tonight, of course, we are talking about Herculobus with Red Planet by V.M. Ravalu. Uh, and I am now on Chapter 4. Uh, we kind of skipped over the Venus part. Um, I might go back and take a look at that. Uh, but I think, uh, you know, I want to talk about something that's a little bit more uh, current here. And we call all about the, the next chapter. is called Life on Planet Mars. Now, of course, we have had Alfred Weber on my show. Uh, we've talked about the, the jump rooms, Barack Obama and his association with, uh, with the Project Pegasus program. We've talked about how Mars itself has, is, is a livable planet. And now, here we go, talking about what is going on on planet Mars. Life on Mars is exactly the same as life on Venus. There is a freedom in everything. Martians can move themselves to any place of the planet without any need of paperwork or passports. Wherever they go, there is a place to sleep, food to eat, and clothing to change into. Was I talking about that earlier in my little run for president? Everybody, of course, tonight, Donnie Gilson has declared his presidency candidacy for president for 2012. So get the word out. Let's thank Donnie Gilson for President Posters. <laughs> let's, beat, let's beat Mitt Romney, and let's beat uh, Barack Obama. No, I'm just, well, just right in the end. <laughs> Don't waste a vote on Mickey Mouse, like I've always said. <laughs> All right. But here we go. Wherever they go, there's a place to eat, food to eat, and clothing to change into. They find anything that they need anywhere on Mars, because there's no frontiers, but complete freedom. As it is on the other planets, as it is on other planets in our solar system. So 
The Martians has a heavier body than the Venetians, apparently uh, sturdier because they belong to the ray of, ray of strength. On Mars, everyone wears soldiers' uniforms, a shield, a helmet, and a suit of armor. All of those vestments of war are made from a t material similar to bronze. They have distinguished themselves because they are 100% warriors, but not warriors, as we would understand here. There are no wars between themselves or with other planets. Their war is a combat against the forces of evil. Hmm. Scientology talks about that a little bit. We might. I, I'm working on getting a guest in regards to Scientology on my show as well. It's an area I want to explore. Uh, and as I head down to L.A., I'm going to be going to the Church of Scientology uh, because I, there's, there's something to do with Mars and Scientology that I want to explore. And uh, this is why sometimes when I read some of this stuff that's in the New Age side, I, I, I really... You know, best way to best way to, to learn the truth is by infiltrating, right? Yeah, no wonder I became a mason. All right, so here we go. <laughs> Quiet. Uh, let it be known uh, that on those planets, nobody works using brute force as we do on our planet. Nobody sweats, and they do not get tired because the machines, which are all powered by solar energy, do do the work. Well, that sounds like Venus Project to me. Uh, what the people do is uh, uh, is guide or drive these machines. They go they go relieving each other from their work. Everything moves by means of the wisdom they have. The extraterrestrials are so powerful that they choose to grow, die, or be born again at will. That sounds like a video game. When they get tired of having a physical body for many years, they want to go change it for a new one. They die. When the body dies, they place the body inside a cavity within the wall of exactly the same size as their body. Afterwards, they close a little door and press a button. In a matter of minutes, their body is reduced to ashes. If the body is not totally dead, then the button does not function, and the body is removed to finish the dying process. There is no crematories in, on Mars. The ashes are scattered by, by a tree or buried. Nobody cries because a person died. Death for them is like a change of clothes, nothing more. On those words, there is no uh, involution in the plants, animals, humanity, or planets. Everything, and I hate where I'm reading here, is ascending. I believe with that. Everything is ascending. I can agree with that statement. Here, on the other hand, we descend with the whole planet. The facts are demonstrating it. Those planets do not have plagues, such as flies, gnats, or mosquitoes, which damage health. Nor is there a threat of rep, uh, reptiles and any other dangerous beasts. That's really kind of, you know, you know, <laughs> I, I, whenever I think of it, I think of Avatar, you know, the movie Avatar. Different planets, different beasts. You know, here, we got a dangerous planet we live on. It's a beautiful planet, but a very, very dangerous one. Very, very dangerous one. A lot of, I mean, we, you don't know when you could die. The law on Mars and any and, and other and other planets is of mutual respect for themselves, for others, for life, and for everything. They respect each person's free will. They are not like Earthlings who want to take over the world by dint of bullets and threats. The Gringo Lords are very mistaken with their movies and magazines about extraterrestrial life. I have described the, the life in other planets briefly to make the Americans see that they know nothing of what they portray because that they deny that there is life elsewhere. I do not use telescopes or artificial means to obtain my knowledge of the universe. I know how to manage my internal body with full uh, conscious will. Gnosis gave me the key. I put into practice what Gnosis taught me, and the result is to know because he knows is the one who has the knowledge. He who does not have knowledge is the one who speaks about what he does not know. Practical gnosis cannot be compared with anything. It surpasses all barriers and all walls that stand on the way of our, liber uh, of our liberation. And I agree with that. I really do. I believe that, you know, you know, let's, you know I, I've spoken about this on my show before, you know, if a scientist said it, all science says it. If a scientist said it, well, then all of a sudden it's validated. But if somebody like myself or Alfred or you know any of us say something that are not so-called so-called credible 
or scientists or astronomers that what we say is not true. But however, all of us have the records within inside our brain. All of us have gnosis within inside us. So if my soul is telling me, I believe that we're going down a positive timeline, I believe that, you know, if this dual sun comes in, it's going to work in harmony. We haven't done our, our little five-minute thing, you know, that we you know on the air. We haven't done those in a couple, couple times. But you know what? I want you to continue to do those meditations throughout the day. I've been doing those during the day. I just turn off everything. All my electrical equipment, turn it all off. And I sit and I think about it in harmony. Because I, I believe what's coming in, I want to go down a positive timeline. I believe I've learned everything that I need to learn. Don't want to go through another 36,000 years of incarnation and have to deal with this bullshit anymore. I want us to live in a positive planet. Yeah, you know, of course we're going to have, you know, bickering here and there, but I'm sick of the war. I'm sick of the sick of the monetary system. I'm sick of all of this. Let's change this planet for, for, you know, let's let's be like, you know, if there are aliens, maybe that's maybe that's the reason why the extraterrestrials don't come and talk to us. It's because we're pathetic. That we're pathetic. We just don't know how to learn. We destroy everything in our paths. All of us. And maybe it's time for us to learn a little bit more. And maybe that way of learning is by total annihilation. And I tell you, I'm not the only one on board on that. If I'm ready, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to get the frick off this planet. I'm ready to join my brothers and sisters in the sky. I don't, I, I, I don't want to, you know, leave. But on the other hand, I, I'm losing faith in humanity. I'm losing faith in all of you. I really am. And the nice thing is, you know, me throwing this out and talking on the, on the radio, this is going out in the universe, not just, you know, hanging out here in, on Earth. My cry for help and my cry... You know, I'm sending out, you know, I'm sending out, even a, sending out to my Masonic brothers in, 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 in the Masonic Lodge of the Sky. You know, hey, is there no help for the Widow's Son? Distress call. Calling occupants of interplanetary. Yeah. Interplanetary spaceships. I move now to the interplanetary spaceships with scientists either ignore or question, making humanity doubt the existence of such ships. What we've been talking about, what was the first thing that we talked about in the beginning of this hour, or the beginning of this show, about what's happening down in the Mars station? They want to deny it. It's a weather balloon. Strictly a weather balloon. All the interplanetary spaceships are moved by solar energy. They are made of bulletproof material that does not exist on Earth. Nothing can penetrate them. Spaceships are made of one piece. They do not have any wells, attachments, or rivets. They are controlled by means of buttons. The spaceships have two horizontal tubes made of another material that does not exist on our planet. Well, that sounds like a cigar safe from Anna, doesn't it? The spaceships have two horizontal tubes made up of another material that does not exist on our planet. The material is light, very similar to aluminum, but brighter and stronger. Those tubes go through the spaceship from front to back. The, the solar energy enters at the front end of the ship. The burnt energy is expelled through the back. There are the tails of the fire where the interplanetary ships leave wherever they go. Not all spaceships are round. And here we go. The Vamana. A cigar-shaped, long model exists capable of transporting hundreds of people. Therefore, not all spaceships are the same model or the same size. There are vehicles of transportation in other planets. The crews on these spaceships communicate with each other telepathically. 
without any need for telephones or televisions to enter life. They have all their spiritual facilities of, of faculties awakened. Oh, I am a true believer in telepathic technology and telepathic understanding. I mean, think about it, guys. What do we do when we pray? We're praying to air, right? No, we're praying to God. We're communicating telepathically to God, the source. That's what we're doing. We're communicating telepathically. When we, when we start thinking about our relatives and our friends, and we go, you know, like, to, like I was talking with uh, this girl that I'd kind of seen, and she said something to me. We were talking about Olive Garden, and, you know, going to see Olive Garden, and she, she's like, yeah, you better fill up now, Donnie, because, you know, you're thinking about getting that gastric bypass surgery, you know? And I, I, the, when she was typing that, I knew she was typing that. It's like, she, like I could hear her before she even typed it. Or it's like when you finish other people's sentences. We have telepathic powers. We just don't realize it. We just have not unlocked it. What are those poor earthlings who pray so heartily and loudly like the gringo gentlemen and others so powerful countries doing? They believe that they are the only ones who know but they are truly ignorant of the marvels that exist on other planets. The extraterrestrial interplanetary spaceships are ready now to take off and rescue all those people who are working with the formula that is given in this book. Extraterrestrials know everything. They, they are in the, uh, there is no need to call them because they already know us inside and out. When the moment arrives, the rescue will be done in their spaceships. Oof. Oof. Oof, 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 oof. This is where I have to part with this guy on this one because I want us to be cautious. I've always said be cautious about any type of spaceship landing saying they're going to come down and be your savior. Always be cautious. You know, I wouldn't mind getting up on a spaceship flying through, but I'm just, you know, be cautious on that. Let your soul make that decision. Few persons will achieve it to be rescued. Those that will that can be counted on the fingers on the hands because nobody wants to work. Wait, a minute, what did he say here? Few persons will achieve it to be rescued. Those that will those that will can see yeah, this is not proper English. Those that will can be counted on the finger of the hands because nobody wants to work. People take everything to the mind, and from the mind comes theories. It is the same ego which brings them out. And what we what we need are facts. We need to begin the spiritual work once and for all. Well, I believe I, I believe where he's going on this one, where he's talking about the ego. I think we need to drop the ego. But could these, you know, aliens have egos as well? You know, I think we just need to be very cautious. Very very cautious indeed. My goal in writing this narrative is to let the whole world know that the truth, the truth at long last. We are not the only inhabitants of our solar system and our galaxy. We're the most inferior ones. Whoa. The countries that believe, the, the countries that believe themselves to be great powers and think they know all demonstrate just the opposite by their actions. The quality of our humanity is revealed by the astro cities that are committing, uh, committing against themselves and against others. Do not tell me the tales they fabricate because I do know the truth. This is why I've written this book, so that humanity can see the gringo lords and the scientific lords have humanity wrapped up in a veil, lies, and threats. Truth is all what I'm saying, and it is what I've defended all the time. If I have to die to uphold the truth, then I will die. Well, same I've always said, too, as a Christian, you know, I, it's, it's already stated I'm going to die. And I think the really only real true path to ascension is to die. You know, I always give the the the, the thought process on, uh, you know, I bring us back to the last temptation of Christ. We've, we've talked about that before, and it's been accomplished. You think our higher selves, our interdimensional selves, 
you think there's really such thing as death? No. This is ascension. The Egyptian Book of the Dead talked about it. The Tibetan Book of the Dead talked about it. I mean, it's just a next step. But I don't want to be trapped in that cycle that we've been partaking in for the last 36,000 years. I'm done with this. Done. I want to ascend to a higher plane. I do not want to be in physical form anymore. I'm done. I'm done with this, this, this stress. I'm done with this ego. I'm done with this, everything. So I just want singularity. I want to be part of the source again. That's what I want. I want us. I, I want you know. I want to be able to be in a dream state. I want to. I want to be able to manifest things and create things for myself and to live in this harmony with the universe. And I believe that's what he might be talking about in here is also interdimensional extraterrestrials that are being able to do that. You know. Albert Einstein once said, if you can imagine it, it's probably be true. Well, I have a pretty grand imagination. And a lot of my listeners have that same grand imagination. So if we can imagine it, it's probably true, and it probably trumps any type of physics that we even know, or any type of thought process that we know. So just so and pray, communicate with yourself, with your higher self, that you will be joined. You know, one movie that you might want to watch is The Fountain with Hugh Jackman. You guys can ever watch that movie, The Fountain by Hugh Jackman? Fabulous movie. Tells you exactly what kind of what I'm trying to communicate here. Because at the end of that movie is exactly what I want. What I want. Because I believe that my my higher self right now, my higher self is caught in a bubble. And even my twin flame is caught in a bubble, and that's why she's not here with me. Or if she is, we haven't met. The death. This chapter is esoterically entitled, The Death. Because he who begins to disintegrate his psychological defects begins to leave the circle in which all humanity is stuck. When a person is working in a disintegration of his psychological defects and is invited to do some mischief, people comment, he is useless, he is dead. This person behaves differently because he does not follow the ways of the rest of humanity. Boy, isn't that some Donnie Gilson up in a, in a frickin' nutshell right there? Exactly what people say about me. Every human be being bears with a divine spark that his so-called soul, Budhat, or essence. Well, it has different names, but in reality, it is the divine spark, which impels us, it, it impels us and gives us strength to embark in the spiritual work. Like the one I am teaching you here, the essence or soul is trapped within our evilness, defects, or psychological selves, which esoterically is called ego. Those cells are the ones that do not allow the essence to maintain itself freely because they are, they are the ones that cry out noisily into control of the person. Now, with the work of the disintegration of the defects of ourselves, the essence goes on growing. It becomes stronger. It, go, it goes manifesting itself with more clarity, with more strength. It goes converting it into one soul. As an example, a tree stands at the main roots. The main reefs do not nourish, but only keeps it standing, the wind in its own weight, so that it does not fall or topple over. The tiny feeder roots are ones that spread out the surface of the soul and go absorbing the nutrients to nourish it. The ego does, does the same thing within us or within humanity. The thick roots sustaining the tree symbolize the cardinal defects like lust, revenge, anger, pride, and others. Oof, man. Tell you, I've got all those. The small feeders' roots represent the details, those diminutive manifestations that are part of the feeders of the cardinal of the cardinal defects. We do not believe those details to be defects at all, 
and yet they feed the ego. The ego is nourished by all those demonstrative details which we have in large quantities. We must begin to psychologically observe ourselves to see the thousands and thousands of negative details we have, which are the ones that feed the ego. And that's very, that's very important. We have to all recognize our own misfaults, our own faults within our own selves to let go of the ego. I, I know. It's like, it's like admitting you're a sinner. You know? I have many faults. Many, and I, I, I struggle with them every day. You know, one's lust, of course, you know, that, that's a big one. That's a huge one, you know. You know, we're all sexual creatures. We're all animals. We all act like animals. you got to learn how to act like spiritual beings. And I'm the one that, you know, even myself, and I'm trying my hardest. Sometimes it's very, very, very difficult to do. We must to be, begin to psychologically observe ourselves to see the thousands and thousands of negative details we have, which are the ones that we set be the ego. That is what we must do to save ourselves from this disaster. Boy. There we go. He summed it up right there. This is what we must do to save ourselves from the disaster. The positive timeline. Remember what I've said to everybody here? You know, we've got two roads to go down. Drop the ego. Move towards love. Try to go that way. One must begin to remove the tiny feeder roots that nourish the tree. Negative details are bad thoughts, hatred, the envy that one feels against other people, taking or stealing coins and insignificant things, telling lies, singing words full of pride, ambition, and greed. One must begin in earnest to disintegrate all those details deep within us that are so negative. Man, is that hard to do? Or what? Well, I think we just need to, once we get rid of this, this monetary greed, you know, that's, uh, that's an area that, that we, uh, that I think we'll, we'll actually have, that, that could open up that, 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 that area. Once we're all taken care of, I think, uh, you know, we all have, basic needs because right now we don't even have the basic needs to take care of ourselves guys we don't you know it's sad actually I see I got a caller here uh, all right, actually, uh, uh, let's see here let me just finish this and I'm gonna I see that you're in queue Kevin so I, I might bring you on here I see sister Sarah you're there as well uh, so let me finish this we're almost done with this with this book here, um, so let's, let me finish this up here. Uh, the ego does not uh, does the same thing within us or within humanity. Okay, I already read that. There is another divine spark within us that is called the divine mother, whose mission is to disintegrate other defects within lands that she that she possesses. Well, this is something that I'd like to talk to with Laura Eisenhower about. Because she's very much into the whole divine mother thing. Uh, and um, sometimes I, I, you know, I think the Divine Mother is Earth, you know, is what we live on. Um, and I think that's the Divine Mother, which is connected to the Father, creating the Source. No matter who, uh, who gives out these details may be, while manifesting, one must ask the inner Divine Mother, my mother removed this defect from me and disintegrate it with your lance. Well, you can do the same thing with Christ. You know, ask Christ to remove these 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 things from you. The Father can do that too. But I always, you know, one thing I always wondered is if there's always. I'd like to be a fly on the wall between the Divine Mother and the Divine Father. You imagine the bickering that goes on between these. You know. Maybe that's why there's so much so much confusion on what we should do is because they can't get along either. Maybe that's why we have all these earthquakes and stuff. It's because the mothers get pissed if the fathers aren't listening or vice versa. She will do so because that is her mission, <laughs> to help us so that we can liberate ourselves. In this way, the tree of our ego does not grow anymore. It begins to lose its nourishment it becomes 
withered. When I am teaching here, what I am teaching here is for you to put into practice in real life. Wherever you go, whatever you are working or whatever you are doing, you must pay attention to your mind, to your heart, and to your sex. Any defect manifests itself through each other through one of these three centers. When an element manifests itself, regardless of which three centers, you must immediately beseech your Divine Mother so that she can proceed to disintegrate it. Hmm. Let me read that again. When an element manifests itself, regardless of which of those three centers, you must immediately beseech your Divine Mother so that she can proceed to disintegrate it. Well, Jesus Christ could do the same thing. And this is where I have a little bit of problem on this book here. I think the underlying statement is correct. But he's, there, there's no, it, it, there's no, there, there's no, no, nothing here in regards to Christ. And calling upon Christ to help us out with this as well. Through this work on the death of the ego, that I am pointing out to you here, one acquires scientific chastity and one learns to love humanity. He who does not work on disintegration of his psychological defects can never achieve chastity, nor can he never feel love for others because he does not love himself. Hmm. As I said, guys, this is the first time I've read this book, and I want to read this paragraph one more time. Through this work on the death of the ego that I am pointing out to you here, one acquires scientific chastity and one learns to love humanity. He who does not work on the disintegration of his psychological defects can never achieve chastity, nor can he ever feel love for others because he does not love himself. That's pretty deep. You know, I, I'll be the first to admit it. I, I don't even love myself anymore. I don't. Like, I, I kind of always wonder, why am I here? Well, well, why should I just carry on? How could I love humanity anymore? It is somewhat difficult to love yourself. We always put other people in front of us. We always put people ahead of us. And that's why I've talked about this walkabout. Maybe I need to take this walkabout to redefine dying. And to remember that I need to love myself. Very important aspect to things. You know, I share my heart on my sleeve with you guys every time on this radio show that maybe I can reach out and touch one of you. I know I've, I've done a lot of good in this world. I know I've, I've, I've brought atheists to, to, to God. I've brought people that question God to God. But maybe God's time, trying to tell me now, maybe it's time for me to step back and to love myself. And because, you know, working on the air is kind of fun and it is kind of ego-driven a little bit. We all, as talk shows, have a little bit of ego. That's interesting what you said here. The disintegration of the defects and the astral unfolding are the only formulas that exist for the rest of you. And let's see here. Do we have enough time to read this last part here? Um... I'm going to read the final note, and then I'm going to bring uh, Kevin and Sister Sarah on here. Um, I give these formulas to humanity because whoever truly wants to save himself from the cataclysm that is coming must begin at once to disintegrate his psychological ego all of the, and all of the thousands of defects. You must qualify so that in the moment of the rescue, you'll be taken to a safe place where no harm will come to you, and you can continue to work on the me, myself, until reaching liberation. The person who qualifies will be on the one who succeeds in escaping from the disaster. The divine justice calls this humanity the lost harvest. That is 
to say there is nothing else to do. The destruction that is coming is because the gods cannot do anything more for us. Therefore, no one can take the hierarchy by surprise. Everything is planned. Well, I've said that before. I said that, you know, even you and God made a plan. I and God made a plan before I came here. The experience, the things that we experience on this planet. And it's time. It's time. It's time to make a difference. Because I know the next 40 years, and if, if lifespan is the way it continues here, you know, in my earthly realm, I don't want to live another 40 years like this. I, I, I'm, I, it's depressing. This world is depressing. You know, I was listening to that, uh, uh, the new VP candidate, you know, and uh, for Romney. And he was, you know, our, our parents, well, I'm a Gen, Gen Xer, our quality of life of living and the opportunities that were that are available to me right now are gone because my, my parents screwed everything up. The hippies freaking fucked everything up. Excuse my language, but that's what they did. And they became sellouts with all their BMWs and all their money. And they lost track of what exactly the message they were trying to get across back in the 60s. And the quality of life that the that, that my grandfather had and the opportunities they gave, you know, that's why, you know, the World War II veterans and, and, and the World War I vets, I have great pride in those people because they created a better quality of life. But I tell you, once the Vietnam War came along and the 70s and the 80s, quality of life went into the pits. And now, the children now have no opportunity to come out of college with full debt. They have no opportunity. And what are those children's children going to have? And I tell you, who's going to take care of me? I saw this, I saw this, uh, 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 was watching Two and a Half Men. And uh, uh, Charlie Sheen's brother, uh, you know, Charlie had found out this, this, this uh, lump of uh, money under Alan's um, lamp that Alan had been saving. And, you know, and it was, you know, it was a humorous moment because, you know, of course, Alan's booching off of Charlie to stay with, with, with Charlie. But John Cryer, uh, who plays Alan, made an interesting thing. He says, you know, that money is for old Alan. And Charlie thought that he meant old Alan as the Alan that, you know, was the Alan where, you know, he was married and had a child and all that stuff. You know, he was talking about the old Alan when he gets older. <clears throat> and I'm thinking about old Don. I'm thinking about old Donnie. What, who's going to take care of me when I'm 70, 80 years old? You should ask yourself that same question. It's going to be very difficult and impossible if we keep going down the right this path of greed. It would be impossible. We're almost done here. The divine justice calls for humanity, the lost harvest. Okay. Uh, dear reader, I'm speaking very clearly. Eh, hang on here. Clearly, so that you understand the necessities to seriously launch yourselves to do your inner work. Because whoever is working will be taken from the danger. This is not to be theorized or argued. Rather, the formulas that I am giving in this book are teachings. You must ex experiment. If I'm, if I'm still on the air here, it looks like my phone went dead there, so I don't know if I, if you guys caught that last 
few seconds here. Let me just make sure that I am on the air with you guys. Looks like I am there. Okay. All right. So here we go. I was reading the last part of this, and I'm going to bring on uh, Kevin and um, Sister Sarah here. I'm not a fear monger. I'm, a hu uh, I'm going to read from where I left off here. There is nothing left to appeal to. I am not a fear monger. I'm a human being who is warning about that which will come. What I'm saying is serious. Whoever has fear of God will begin to work against his defects, which kept us isolated from our true inner father. Although I could go into more detail regarding the esoteric part, I do not want to take up all your time. Fight so that can, each one of us can realize this work that I teach because it is the path to follow. I do not want anyone to be lost. And that's exactly what I, what I believe as well. I don't want any of us to be lost. I want all of us to have a, a wonderful life, to be part of this wonderful place called Earth, that we can actually have, that nothing is impossible, that things are improbable. It's very, it's very important that these are the things that we can do and understand. So with that being said, I'm going to last 20 minutes here. I'm going to bring on Kevin. Kevin, how are you? Hey, Donnie. Thanks for taking the call, sir. Not a problem. How are you, brother? I'm doing as well as it can be in this crazy world as it is before us. <laughs> it is and quite I, a crazy world. It's, you know, it's... Uh, you know, I, I think the whole uh, underlining message of, of tonight's show is that we have to change ourselves uh, individually, one by one. And, Absolutely. And, and focus on our inner selves, because if we don't, nothing can change. Right. It's kind of metaphorically, if you think you're looking at a uh, like a, a dirty mirror, you know, you you got to clean that mirror off and get a clear picture, yep. you know, where, where some people are just accustomed to be accepting of how dirty the mirror is and just looking at it for what it could possibly be instead of taking the time or the effort to get a better imaging of what it is. But um, I, I did find it interesting because as a descendant, of the Anishinaabe people, which for those that don't know, is a indigenous tribe of North America that existed between the borders of long ago, um, Canada and the United States, that they discuss their ancestry in almost a uh, uh, um, an extraterrestrial entities mm -hmm. that they believe well there's three crea creation stories but one of them talks about how they were brought to the earth and settled down onto the earth and then when they discuss of other extraterrestrials they talk about them like uh, like your neighbor next door like it's no big deal mm -hmm. you know and I, and I bring this into it because I, I do personally believe that there are entities from other planets or dimensions you know definitely you know, they discuss like walk-ins and spirits and, in a sense, possession too. But the um, Carl Sagan description when he talks about the mathematics of the planets out there are so overwhelming. How could there not be extraterrestrials? Mm -hmm. And in our in our arrogance of believing that we are. We are the only entity that could be out there. Because if you just take a look at our Earth, with all of the 
numerous animals that are on this earth just because we can communicate with these other animals doesn't mean they're not intelligent you know it's kind of oh, like uh, I, I agree oh, I agree 100% you know I, I, that's what I said earlier I was like well maybe the reason why extraterrestrials aren't communicating with us is because when they look at us they're like what pathetic neurons you know what, what do you, <laughs> I don't want it's, it's kind of like it's kind of like you know where, you know, even us here, we sometimes don't even want to, you know, talk to people. We we just, you know, we want them out of our lives. They're negative energies in our lives. We want them out. Same thing can go for, for extraterrestrials. They look at us as a drain on their energy. And, you know, they, they can get caught up in, you know, in the sadness of us, too, because we are kind of a sad civilization, humanity. We really are. You know, if you really look, if you look at it in a higher, higher realm, if you look down at us, we're pretty pathetic, really. I mean, we're, we're, we're we'll, we'll kill anybody for a dollar. We'll, uh, you know, we'll, we'll lie, cheat to get to the top. We'll sleep with anything that moves. It's, you know, it's, it, it, and, and this is the majority. You know, not saying the minority does that, but the majority will do whatever they can to get to the top. And I was, you know, I was, I was, you know, you know, in, in Hollywood glorifies it. Yeah. You know, well, it's sick. I, I've, I've said it before, I joke about the de-evolution of inhumane kind. Oh, we are. We are de-evolving minute by minute, second by second. You know, it, <laughs> it, 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 it's, you know, I, I don't see us evolving at all. I mean, I see technology evolving. I see, you know, you know, materialism evolving, but I don't see our brains growing any larger or getting us any smarter. We're dumbing down our children, for God's sake. Well, the one thing that I can, I, I can't deny in all of the time that I've done in researching and looking in for the truth is that they have, whoever they may be, I refer to them, they are the puppeteers, but they have consistently tried to suppress um, the metaphysics and um, our pineal gland. You know, and, and if you look into the pineal gland and its purpose for the simplistic way of saying it, our pineal gland, when it's working properly, secretes, for lack of a better word, happy juice. It's like when we, when we giggle, when we laugh, when we feel that euphoria of a good, hearty gut laugh, that's our pineal gland. Mm -hmm. and, and with the fluoride, and the preservatives and and additives and stuff, they are ruining and solidifying and calcifying our pineal gland. You know, and it, it makes me wonder, and this is my theory of it, that since we allegedly use less than 10% of our brain, could it be some type of electromagnetic occurrence that has happened in our past or in our future where the magnetic shift of the earth could possibly re-elevate our brain to where we use more of it. Well, they say the Atlanteans and the Lamarians, you know, were, were actually seeing the full potential of their brain. I mean, that's where tele tele telepathy came into the book. I mean, they were directly locked into the source. They were able to communicate with the source back and forth. I mean, that's, you know, so I'm wondering in the de-evolution of our brain or the 10%, if there's not a magnetical type of uh, force or uh, field that has now restricted our brain from evolving. That we have so many, so much chemicals in our, in our, in, in our brain right now that are passed down through generations that now they're, the, the brain makeup, the, the pineal gland itself, has got, you know, kind of a, a, a shield over it, and it's not allowing the ascension to take place. 
Oh, absolutely. That makes sense, too, especially if you look in the overabundance of heavy metals that are bombarded mm -hmm. on us daily in our foods and in chemtrails. Oh. And I was shocked the it. other day. I was shocked. That I, I, I'm allergic to apples, and, and I, I get um, uh, whatever I eat an apple nowadays, I get this really bad scratchiness in my throat. Well, I, I thought that was the only fruit I was looking to. I went to eat a pear the other day. Same thing happened, and I, 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 I became violently ill. I was puking it all up. I couldn't handle it. I, my whole stomach started over. It was like uh, from a pear that I got from a grocery store. And, and, and I was, you know, I washed it, cleaned it, and did the whole thing, you know. And I got violent, violently ill on it. And, I, you know, the pesticides that we're throwing on our food, the, 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 the GMOs that we're experiencing in our food, I wonder why we're, we're becoming a uh, dumbed-down nation. It's, it's just absolutely ridiculous. Right. And it, it, it's so vital of where you are what you eat. And I don't, yeah. I don't care what religion you are or your spiritual path and stuff, that for the sake of argument that we all are spiritual entities trapped within a physical shell. If the Creator has given us any monumental gift whatsoever, it is our physical being. And hey, if you do not take care of that physical being, would that not be an ultimate sin against the Creator? Oh yeah, of course. Of course it would. I'm going to bring, I know Sister Sarah's been waiting patiently as well, so I'm going to bring her into the conversation. Sister Sarah, I'm sorry, I, I wasn't even paying attention to my board. How are you? Welcome. Thanks for the welcome and uh, good evening. <laughs> Good morning. It's like three o'clock in the morning here. <laughs> hey, Kevin. It, it, it is late. Thank you so much for for sticking around. We got about eight minutes left of the show, uh, and uh, I've been on my 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 uh, little uh, reading tonight, and I wanted to get that done because we're going to put it up as a video as well. Uh, but I wanted to get you into the last part of the show here to uh, to weigh on weigh in on what you uh, have heard throughout the night and what what we've been talking about here with uh, Kevin. Well, I sure and I really, really, uh, surely did enjoy listening. Really uh, thought-provoking, really thought-provoking. So my goodness, I could talk about millions of things, but I just want to ask. I did just two things. I know we've only got a short time left, and mm -hmm. um, it's like this. Uh, did I really hear you say that you were conscious of the fact that your parents, like, really like? Really blew, really did some destructive things here that we're cleaning. Yeah, up. See, I'm, I'm like not, you know, I didn't go like bongo for. Re, yeah, but like, but Donnie, have you ever heard anybody else say this, say that, out loud? No, mm -hmm. no. Don't, but listen, don't you think like we really, if that that's really really true, and it's like we don't even we're the kind of people because the the children never. We just can't. That's the whole conundrum. We can't prosecute the parents. But if we could, in this flipping around moment, you know, <laughs> of it all, do that, right. we would not punish. But, you know, the orange jumpsuit, you know, because of who they are, it would transform the, the criminal justice system. It would be overflowed. I mean, really. Just, oh, I'm, I, not, I'm, not, I'm not stating what I, what, I, what, I, what, I, what I stated is, you know, it just seems like, you know, the quality of living that, you know, we have set up, and I think even and, and even our generation is guilty of it as well, uh, the Gen Xers or even the Gen Zers, we're guilty of it as well because we have not set up a good future for the children that are living today. I mean, these kids that are coming up through through the uh, through the uh, educational system and right now they just I mean what kind of future do they have in front of them the, I mean it's filled with debt it's filled with it's just it's it's just concerning to me it just seems like it started but freedom standing up to the parents there's such freedom in actually standing up to them and saying you know even starting to think because that's I understand that it's their game that they just because that's the whole legal system that they're 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 entrenched in that's what we're saying. I understand it's their game, but you know what? It's like 
we, we aren't ignorant, and it's just gone beyond the game at this point. And so why don't we just use that? We're not going to hurt them or punish them. You know, we're, no. But, but to stand up it. for that, just to say that out loud and to stick with it and stand with it. You know, Jesus, Jesus said some things about this that, you know, can really be stated here. So can, so can just the truth. And, and I just want to, you know, we're, I, I, I want to take any more time. This could be a huge conversation. Um, oh, yeah. Thank you very much for, for um, you know, just letting me say this much, because it's very controversial. You know, I'm sure it was not the favorite thing to pick out of all the absolutely incredible things you said. But, you know, I also want to say, like, this goes with that. Like, I remember a time, and maybe it was just because I was ignorant. There was a time, like, you know, in the 60s. You know, I was really only, yeah, I was like 12 years old in 1968, you know. Mm -hmm. but, but it's like, when the first time, like, you know, that you talked about spaceships, you know, like with your friends, you know, sitting out in the, we used to sit out in the park, you know, in, in New York City, and you would park and, and, and talk about that. Was it really, you know, we, we already, we already, like, we were not home watching TV when they landed on, they were supposed to walk on the moon. We already were just, we, I don't remember where we heard it, we just kind of started to figure it out. Like, they, they could be making it up. They, it was just, I'm going to end with this. But it's like, and maybe not everybody is going to admit to or, you know, remember that there was this time where TV was just fucking fabulous when you were a kid. And they had these commercials for toys. And, but then, like, you know, none of them were the same. And the food they advertised, it wasn't the same. It was like really something you wanted. And you'd get there, and it was just like nonsense. We got that at such a young age, you know? So... It's, it's like well, there was a, you know there was an entertainment value and, and talking about and we got only a couple minutes left so I need to de cut it short here because I got to close out with some stuff but you know like today for instance my favorite one of my favorite characters uh, in television died recently today uh, Arnold Horshack the guy who played Arnold Horshack died Welcome Back Cotter was one of my favorite shows I mean the simplicity of of TV of how it used to be and you know Kevin you were talking about. Uh, you know, glee and 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 uh, and happiness and cheerfulness and laughing. Um, these are the things that we experienced back in the day. We're not experiencing those things anymore. These are the things that we that we took advantage. We we, we took for granted back when we were younger. Uh, this could be a whole uh, you know a, a, a whole different subject. Tonight, I want to thank you all for joining me tonight, Kevin, uh, Sister Sarah. Thanks for calling in. You know, guys, we'll be back on the air on uh, Saturday evening uh, for th special edition of 32 Degrees. That's the new name of it, special edition of 32 Degrees. And, of course, we'll be back here Monday uh, and Wednesday right here on freedomizerradio.com. We start at 9 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, going all the way till midnight. Um, not sure what I'm going to do uh, with my show on Saturday night. might have Chris Gio with me. Chris and I, we're going to set up uh, one of the guests from Ozark Publishing, uh, I'm not sure if that's been set up or not because I haven't really talked to Chris. Uh, so we'll kind of play it by ear for Saturday night show. I want to thank you all for joining me tonight. It's really, really been a pleasure uh, to go over this book of Her Herculobus or Red Planet. Uh, thank you all for listening. We'll have this up on YouTube as well. Uh, remember, all of our wonderful shows uh, on freedomizerradio.com. Also remember to join Vicki uh, for her show tomorrow night, The Heated Conversation, uh, on Thursdays and Fridays, and of course, on Doctrine Ministries. Do not miss that with Minister Kenneth Emanuel as well and all of our other great programming as well right here on freedomizerradio.com. Thanks so much tonight. Again, we'll see you on Saturday night. We start at 9 p.m. Pacific, going till 11. God bless you. I love you all. Good night. We have paid into the banks and, and the tax, the taxes that we paid for the property.